Hey, strangers. Hey, strangers. Welcome to another episode of The Strange Sessions. I know Kurt always starts with some alliteration, but I'm just not that creative. So <laughs> I don't even know what I'm going to start the next one with yet, oh, so I'm going to have yeah, to mull that over. Yeah, we're recording two episodes today. Yes. So That second one, I think, will show up in August, right? Yes. Yeah. Or, yeah, I think it's the last weekend that we have an episode coming out in August. But yeah. if you're new here, I'm Krista. I'm Kurt. This nice to Kurt. meet you. Um, if you don't want to sit through the next, I don't know, 15, 20 minutes of taste test welcoming new strangers... And general housekeeping, just hit pause, check the show notes. We will post the timestamp of the actual topic start. Yes. Um, I also wanted to mention, if you're listening on on an app on your phone, we do have video on YouTube. So maybe check that out. Also, if you're watching on YouTube and you're like, oh, I wish I had an app I could listen to this on. (laughs) Any plat- podcasting platform you, you can find say, If you're watching on. on YouTube and you're like, I Ew. wish I wasn't watching yeah. these two. Well, just hit stop, <laughs> I guess. <laughs> unsubscribe. You won't hear many people saying that. Please unsubscribe. <laughs> <laughs> I do like that we don't sit here and say, can you please like and subscribe? It really helps yeah. our channel. Yeah, we don't do. Every we're, single video I watch We are not good at self-promotion that. at no, all. No, we're terrible. But that's what makes us us, I think. Yeah. Oh. You know. I forgot I need to adjust my microphone because someone said they don't like that they can't see our whole faces. Oh. We do take feedback seriously. Yes, we do. I got to stop looking at the screen and look at the actual I, I ah. never look at the camera. I got to start looking terrible at the camera. Eye. Yeah, you do focus like. But on... then I hate my seeing myself on the camera. Like especially, I, I barely got any sleep last night. I'm dog sitting for a friend, and I wasn't gonna stay with the dogs, but they're so good. It's like, oh, I'll stay here with you guys, so you're Snuggle not scared. Buddies. Yeah. So I slept more than I expected to, mm, but I am still super groggy today. Uh, oh, do our do our spiel for if you don't want to listen to us. I did that already, dude. Go to the wow, show notes. You are out Did of you it. seriously? I literally just said that like two minutes ago. Okay. <laughs> I, I, <laughs> this is going to be a humdinger of an I, episode, yeah, guys. I am out of it. Maybe you'll just let you take over this yeah, one I and totally I'll, go said s- that. I'll go sleep upstairs. I do normally forget, so um, thank you, but okay. I did <laughs> say it. <laughs> okay. I didn't even know you did it. Wow. I must have fell asleep. <laughs> Micro nap. Uh, so shout outs to our two newest strangers who joined our Facebook group. Those are Philip. I think it's Riseweber, R E I S W E B E R, Riseweber or Riseweber, and Steve Alexander. Thank you guys so much for joining. I just had a thought. Like, do you think people care that we say their last names? But I, I guess the only feedback we've ever gotten is, "Hey, I'm so glad you said my name right." Nobody's yeah. ever said, "Don't say my last name." Yeah, no, nobody ever has. Okay. I want to shout out to. My brother and my sister-in-law, Nicole, because they went on a trip and they bought me this nifty new Bigfoot. Oh, nice. Sure. Hide and seek champion. A little jealous Love because that. they went to, um, they sent me a picture from Klingman's Dome in Smoky Mountains. And I'm so obsessed with that place because of the Trini, the Trini Gibson. Story? Yes. Yeah. And I like so badly oh. want to go there. And I was so That's jealous. That's so cool. That they were there. Did they take pictures and yes. stuff? Yeah. Did they find her? No, they didn't find her. I don't think. I'm pretty sure. You I don't think? Actually, I think Corey would have said something <laughs> Yeah, to I me. feel like he would have said something. Um, but yeah, while they were gone, I stayed at their house and it was, I'm, I'm, you know, like a, a lot of the stuff I've been doing lately on the podcast involves reading Reddit stories and mm. today's is no different, mm-hmm. but I didn't really know how to do with much of this without reading Reddit stories because that's where I'm finding most of these. But I'm finding out there's a big difference between reading these creepy Reddit stories when I'm in my apartment <laughs> <laughs> As opposed to in a big house all yeah, by myself. At night. And you hear something and I'm like, oh, what was that? You know, where if I'm in my apartment, it's a neighbor or something. Right. But when I'm yeah. in a house by myself, there's a whole different level of creepiness. There's <laughs> that comes. meme. Well, it's the opposite, actually. The meme or whatever it is, is if I hear noises around my house, I hope it's a ghost because I can't afford to fix anything. Yeah. <laughs> you were having the too. opposite yeah. feeling. Yeah. Like, yeah. But it's, it's I'm, I'm, ghost, I'm discovering it that ghost. living in a house is creepier when you hear something mm-hmm. at night as opposed to... An apartment complex. That's legit. Uh, also, house... even if it is another person and you live in a house alone, you're like, okay, why is somebody creeping around my house? Yeah. Like, ghost or person? Either yeah, way, I'd rather scary. have a ghost than a person creeping 100%. around in my house. <laughs> um, the only thing for, I have for housekeeping is that this doesn't affect the listeners, but we're going back to releasing the episode the day after we record it. Yeah. Because you and it I, were, we were getting all <laughs> sorts of confused with what, what was getting released when. And, yeah, because uh, I'm taking a week off for my birthday in August, and we want to compensate for that weekend and not actually release like a side session. So we're recording two episodes today, but I had to, and I do have it figured out, but because everything gets released in the future, yeah. the old way, I, it was really hard to figure out, well, is that a side sessions or a strange sessions? And when would we record that? It got really confusing. Yeah. Yep, it did. So now that we're down to one camera, the editing is way more... Um, 
well, it's way less work. So it's just easier to release it the next day. So this yeah. is coming out tomorrow. I was thinking on the way down here, we need to hire an intern. We need to hire a camera person. Them. Yeah. We need to hire a camera person. We need to hire a publicist. And we need a makeup artist or a stylist for wow. when we get here so early in the morning. So please like and subscribe. <laughs> definitely, because... like, definitely like and subscribe so we can hire these people. Oh, and if you don't know, we do have a Kofi. Um, yeah. Yeah. Uh, shop i guess you can buy merchandise there but also we talk about the side sessions a lot if you're not if you don't know what that is it's and you get the the awesome privilege of hearing us it's the unedited the unedited so you get to hear us before the podcast where you get to listen to us both looking at our phones basically (laughs) so hey we talked about dazed and confused (laughs) we did talk about dazed and confused but um but yeah we released extra content called the side sessions and then you get the full unedited episode today when we're recording so you get it a day early yep um but we have three different tiers three dollars five dollars and ten dollars and we are so grateful for everybody who subscribes there yes um, but you can also buy merchandise on that, too. We have hats and T-shirts. Yeah. Just want to put that out there. We need to jump into this other stuff. We have yeah. another letter from Matthew Thornton. We'll add it to the pile add of the letters pile. we haven't opened I yet. noticed when I was getting out of my car that it's slit open on the bottom. So is the CIA starting to look oh, at this? I dang, bet you they broke into it. What is that? I don't know. That's new. I don't know. Hmm. Yeah, what does that say? We the people? I don't know. Hmm. But we need to start opening these and mm-hmm. posting them. There's an entire subreddit where people post that they got letters from him, and he's on the subreddit commenting on the letters. He is? Yeah. Yeah. I'm pretty what, sure it's him. Does he explain anything? <laughs> I don't think so. Oh, my gosh. Uh, and- I'd open them if I knew I'd put they... the call out for mail, and we got one from our clown card person. I have an idea of who it might be. Okay. But- That got... makes me feel better. No, I, I'm- Even if even if they're- yeah, Even if they are you. like a weird stalker, at least we got mail that. from them, so it was nice getting something in the mailbox. I, I'm not sure I agree. <laughs> a huge package from Michaela that we have to open. And again, up. just because it's postmarked Milwaukee doesn't mean they're from Milwaukee. Just so you know, it's just that's where the mail went through. Am I opening this right yes. now? Yes. Okay. I think what creeps me out is they never sign the cards. Should we open Michaela's in the next episode? Sure. Uh, yes, okay. We have something to open. Yes. If friends were flowers, I'd pick you. That's cute. That's actually really cute. <gasps> I thought you didn't like me, but we can be friends. Of course. Why wouldn't we like if you? If I planted a seed. Because you creep me out. <laughs> if I planted a seed. It's just because you. It's just because the person doesn't have their name on it. Yeah, just sign your name. Who are you? If I planted a seed whenever I thought of you, a happy garden would bloom. That's very nice, but I just want to know who you are. Like, why won't you tell us who you are? This is a super nice card. This is a really nice so card. So what does it say again? Not the this. What does that say? I thought you didn't like me, but we can be friends. I think We they, don't know you. I think they just didn't think we liked them because we didn't... The clown card and didn't sign their name. Yeah. We don't know you, so we. I don't know if we like you or not because we don't yes, know you. Yes, put your first name on here. Just to give us a first name. I like you. I was happy that somebody actually sent us a card that we had in our mailbox. Otherwise, I haven't... This is going to turn into, like, a thing. (laughs) (laughs) You know, at at this point, whatever. I'm so tired all the time that, you know... Thank you for the card. Yes, thank you so much for the card. Anonymous person. I actually really... I'm going to take this card. Or do you want to hang it up? I have... We've actually run out of space now, if you haven't noticed. Our whiteboards are all completely full again, so we need another whiteboard. Because I have just a pile of stuff now that we haven't hung up because I don't know where to go with it. Yeah, we do need another whiteboard. We'll keep it here and we can hang it okay. with stuff. Okay, I'm going to add it to the shopping list. Thank you, mystery person. I like the card. I like you, Mr. Person. It's um, like a new segment on our show. We have a taste test. We ha- welcome new strangers and we get a card that's not signed from <laughs> from yeah. the same person. It's fine. Um, I was going to say something insightful, but it's gone. Oh. It's gone. So, Michaela, we're going to open your package during the next episode, yeah. which won't air until August. Yeah. But else we'll still send you a message and thank yes. you for whatever it is. But we'll open it in the next episode. Um, taste test. Taste test. This is from Corey. We've had these before. Okay. But Corey wanted... I haven't had these. One of them I haven't had since I was a kid. But okay. Corey found them. Corey got them when he was you on his trip. Are. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Corey got them when we, he was on his trip. And he wanted us to do this for like a retro taste test. Okay. One of them we've talked about, but I honestly have not had these in forever. Oh. 
Circus oh, peanuts. Oh my gosh. Uh, yeah, we've done these on the show. <laughs> have we? I think we have. That was I... probably the last time we did that. Yeah. Oh, they're a little. And they're a little. But they always are hard. Are they? Okay. Yeah. And I have not had this, I think, since the 70s. Tahitian treat soda. I don't think I've ever had it. Oh my God. I Tahitian used to, treat. Tahitian treat fruit punch soda. Okay. I used to have this. I remember having it in the 70s. It was like a big thing in the 70s. Okay. So this is a very 70s taste test. Okay. So here are the circus peanuts. I'm so bad at this. I. Circus peanuts is one of those things that everybody that. talks garbage about, but then when you eat one, it's like, okay, they're not horrible. <laughs> They're just weird. Such a glowing because review. Because it's a peanut. They're not horrible. It's a peanut, and it's orange, and it's banana flavored. Which what do makes you want to start with? The peanuts. Okay. Which makes banana no sense. Banana flavored. They're banana flavored? Yeah, they are banana flavored. That doesn't make any sense. Smell it. That's banana flavored. Oh. <laughs> I swear we've done this. We, I love how it says on here, a fat-free candy. They're healthy. <laughs> Ready? But then when you smell it, smell you don't really smell anything. It's like you never know. You expect these to be fluffier. Oh, they're very banana y. Yeah, but you expect them to be fluffier, mm -hmm. and they're not fluffier. Mm -mm. They're very dense. It's actually not bad. You don't expect the texture that you get with these. No. No, they're not terrible. You expect it to be <laughs> spongy. Mm. Mm hmm. I actually like this. It's a weird texture. It's a weird texture. It's like chewing on a sponge. Mm-hmm. That's very sweet. Like a really hard sponge that you just sopped up milk with and it got really hard. Well, the way you just described <laughs> it. <laughs> um, I like them. I'm giving them a six. I'm giving them a... They're confusing. Why are they shaped like and look like peanuts, but they taste like bananas? I'm giving them an eight. I I like them more than I thought I did. Okay. That's fair. I feel like for the longest time, I didn't know what their flavor was, but then I read online that it's banana, and I'm like, oh, that makes sense. Yeah, it's definitely banana. Yeah. All right. Should we There's try some, the drink? Yeah. Very sugary. Very sugary. Mm. Here, you want that one? Oh, you don't want I it? I didn't lick it or anything. Whatever. <laughs> I'd still eat it if you did. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> oh, and thank you to all the people that gave me such wishes. sweet birthday oh wishes. Oh my God, you guys made my day. So thank you so much. I don't know what happened too. that day, but I woke up at midnight and wasn't able to get back to sleep. Mm, A couple worse. people said that. How old are you now? 54. Mm, dang. A couple people said that. Uh, I was supposed to enjoy as much as my of my birthday as possible. That's why I woke up at midnight. <laughs> but I could have done without that. But I was a wreck that day. Because then you didn't do anything. I was so Sometimes tired. Sometimes that's okay, though. Yeah, I was so tired. I think all I did was left my house to go pick up some groceries and came back home. But thank you guys so much for all the sweet messages. That was awesome. Thank yeah. you so much. That 54 is love. depressing and... That made it a lot better. So thank you. Instagram and fa Facebook. Yes, Instagram people and Facebook. People really showed up to were make you amazing. Feel so love you guys. Thank you so much for the birthday wishes. Okay, you ready for this one? Yeah. It smells like fruit I, punch. I have not had this. I've in had so fruit long. punch. I haven't had Tahitian treat. Yep, it tastes exactly like I remembered. Fruit mm -hmm. punch soda. Oh wow! With the, with the. It's the, got a weird combination with the peanuts. It has a weird combination with the peanuts. It's not as sweet as I thought it was going to be, which is a plus. It tastes just like I sweet. remember it tasting. I really don't think I've had this since like so 19... So what's like the more... What's the fruit punch that's always... I don't know if there is a fruit punch soda. Oh, not a soda. Maybe that's what's throwing me because it's carbonated. Is Usually a Hawaiian fruit... punch? Oh, I don't know. This is really good. I think sometimes Jim and I get those flavor enhancers yeah. that you put in water. Maybe that's what I'm thinking of. This is actually really good, but I don't think I've had one of these since probably 79 or 80, so it's been a long time. I'll give it like a seven. I don't know. It wouldn't be my first choice for a soda. Drinking that and eating circus peanuts is like the <laughs> 70s all over again. Holy cow. It's like a trip to the dentist. <laughs> <laughs> and a trip to the dentist. Oh, that is... I'm going to give it a nine out of 10, actually, because okay. there's not a lot of fruit punch sodas that I can think of, and this is very yeah. fruit punchy. It's very fruit punchy. I like it. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> wow. <laughs> he got an applause from Kurt. I think it's more of a nostalgia thing because it, it reminds be. me of being a kid. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I would go buy 
go buy a couple packages of uh, wacky package trading cards, which you probably don't remember because mm-hmm. that was way before your time. But I would go to Fairview when that was a cute little market in Mantuak, and I'd buy wacky package trading cards, which I was obsessed with and still am obsessed with. Hmm. And I would get candy like this and stop on the way home on the trail and sit on the trail by the creek and open my my packages and eat my goodies. Wow, so sorry, I didn't mean to go on such a tangent there. <laughs> <laughs> I should put some flowery effect of like <laughs> like a dream, like yeah. a flashback. <laughs> That's why we need a special I'm not effects that talented. person and a special effects person too to totally. our list of people that we need. Oh, also, if you haven't listened or watched the first episode of season two of the Haunted Objects podcast, what are you even doing? It's so good. The whole episode was about. It was good. Tarot. I think you liked it better yeah, because it's I'm, about tarot. I'm not into a tarot as much. But I have such a crush on Dana. Yeah. Oh my god, I just love her. I do too. Um, yeah. <laughs> Uh, but it, it was definitely like I've been working with tarot and oracle decks for four years and I still do it every day. I love the way they had their desks set up. Like yeah, I wish I you and I could too. do that, but we would need. I would love. It. Yeah. <laughs> so I was a... reading a post that Greg made and I guess Carl is the one who built out their whole studio. He made those desks like yeah. everything that is their studio. I mean, it's their office also and their museum, I think. But he he made that the way it is, and I'm like, yeah, we need a Carl, oh, and, and a, a sh- Connor, and a like shout out to Tobias and Emily for their page being oh hacked. Oh my gosh, like that somebody... makes me so mad. Yeah, and I'm I read. What his... is the point? I to get money. I read his post the other day. Oh, and... they're they like they're asking Tobias and yeah for money, and then because they won't give him money. These people have control of their Facebook account, yeah. so they keep posting all this crap. And it's all like weird, vet- not weird, it's veteran yeah. stuff, but pe- I think people are finally catching on and not yeah. leaving comments, except that it must be, I don't know if it's Wayland's sister or something. Yeah. Or Wayland, Tobias' sister. <laughs> yeah. His name is Wayland. But... Um, but that made me want to go in and change all my passwords and then totally. get, a, get an authentication app What and if all that somebody stuff. got into a, the stranger's page and took control of it? Yeah. That would be a nightmare. Yeah, so I'm, I'm working in, on securing my because i think that's my facebook group isn't it wasn't the strangers my facebook group? it might be you might have started yeah. it so i'm looking at secure- he did recommend like how to avoid that happening to you and i was freaking out yeah so i'm looking at securing it and <sighs> but it's like good luck getting money from us i can send you like some circus peanuts and <laughs> <laughs> circus, cards that aren't circus signed. peanuts and dill flavored cotton candy and a hat <laughs> maybe a hat it's in you a strange session yeah, ca- hockey puck cotton candy yeah. you could have that yeah I could send you a little package of goodies, but that's probably about all you get from us. Yeah. Um, anyway, is there anything else we nope, got? I, I feel like so. that was a lot of nonsense. <laughs> I really am out of it today, so I apologize to everybody. Um, but I feel like I'm no more out of it than I am during yeah, every other episode. Like, par for the course. They're, they know what to, if you know, you know. They know what to expect. <laughs> exactly. Are we going to we'll jump? We'll be lucky in? the camera doesn't cut out halfway through. Yeah, let's jump in. <laughs> camera and audio shut off halfway oh, through. God. So we are going to jump into today's, t- t- huh. well, mm-hmm. off to a great start. We're going to jump <laughs> into today's topic, which is another strange creatures story mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and a couple disclaimers. The first disclaimer is I realize our last couple episodes have been very heavy on the Reddit stories and this one is no different. I think people like that. Yeah, but, and, but I didn't know how to really do this one because Reddit stories is where I find these creatures. Mm-hmm. And what's what's what always fascinates me is completely different subreddits where it'll be almost the same kind of creature. And it's like, mm-hmm. what are these things? And yeah. I realize it's Reddit, so God knows how many of these are legit. But even yeah. if a couple of these are legit, yeah, it's like, what the heck is going all on? Get out. So I uh, the next episode will have quite a not not the one we're recording today, but the next one that you guys will hear will have quite a few Reddit stories too. But that I'm contemplating making that a two part episode because there's a lot. It's about the Fae. Oh. The Fae and Fairies, and there's a lot. There. I don't know a lot about that. No, so I'm but there's excited. a lot that I. Is that I was, the one we're recording after this? No. Oh. Okay. No, but I was thinking that it was just like fairies flying around in the woods, and it's not. There's so much. There's so much involved with it. Bigfoot might technically be a Fae. You know, oh, I there's think I elemental did hear that. stuff. So yeah. there's all sorts of stuff going in that. And then there's Reddit stories involving a lot of the things that are supposed to happen with when you interact with the face. So mm-hmm. that's going to be a lot of Reddit stories too. So I apologize for all the Redditness on these last couple episodes, but Reddit. there you go. Second um, thing I wanted to say about today's episode, if you're one of my students or a young strangeling, this might be a creepier episode. So maybe don't listen to this at night. 
because I sent Krista the stories that she's going to be reading, and she said she noped a good percentage of yeah. them already. The first half, for sure. See, and I'm I'm You're more I'm more freaked half. out by the second mm. half. The first half, I'm like whatever. Interesting. Uh, yeah, I'm more freaked out by the second half, by the second part. What is that? Do you hear that? Lucy? Are you like moving when you're talking? Oh, oh you're. That might have been. Okay. <laughs> I keep hearing something already? over here. No, I was like, is there a mouse down here or something? Come from the other oh, room. stop. <laughs> so, strangelings, uh, ex students that I miss. Or adults who just get creeped out. Yeah, easily. I didn't get creeped out. So, Don't students. Don't listen by I miss, yourself in the I miss dark. my students so much. Students, strangelings, people that get crypt out. Crypt out. Crypt out. out crypted easily. Out. <laughs> crypted out. This might be a little <laughs> bit of a. Turn into this might be a creepy one. So, don't listen to it in the woods at night. Yeah, and what my are you doing in the woods at night. <laughs> my last, my last disclaimer is that these come from a place of pure jealousy with me because I'm envious that Monsters Among Us is like the go-to for the mirrored men cryptid. Oh yeah. I, I want us. I want us, I want us to, have to have a, a cryptid go-to. that's our go-to. Not the squonk. The squonk. Everybody knows us. Like the squonk. Well, and there's squonk. only one. And uh... but I'm saying I want one that if it comes up somewhere, people will be like, yeah, you need to go listen to the Strange Sessions oh. podcast because they're the experts on this type of creature. Experts. So I keep looking up creatures and it turns out other podcasts have covered all have of claimed these. them already, kind of. Yeah. So these two are no exception, but that's okay because these two are fascinating yeah. and these two are really creepy. I agree. Uh, so should we jump right into them? Let's do it. The first one we're going to talk about today is Whistlers. And mm-hmm. we've this has come up in our stories quite a bit, actually, where, where stuff like this happens. But I'll just give you a story to preface this. Somebody on Reddit writes, This all started a couple months ago when me and my friends were, for whatever reason, whistling outside on my porch at night. I live on a 20-acre pasture on the outskirts of town with a lot of woods. But one of the times we whistled, we heard one back. Ever since then, every once in a while between 11 p.m. to 4 a.m., I will whistle and then I might get one back, usually in the direction of the pasture in the woods. For the last three weeks or so, it's been in the direction of the street closer to my house. But today, I pulled into my driveway and hopped out of my car, and about 20 feet away in the dark, I heard a whistle that was super close to me, and this time, I wasn't the one that started it. Does anyone have any thoughts or know what this might be? And then they write, Update. This last Sunday, I was watching TV on my couch that is in the center of my open living room. I was just starting to relax and close my eyes. I heard the creak of what sounded like something leaning on my couch, and then I heard a whistle that sounded exactly like the one I heard when hopping out of my car, except this time it was right behind my head. Mm -mm. (laughs) No. I leapt up and saw nothing. Nothing else happened that night besides me just having trouble sleeping. Just now when I went outside around 20 minutes ago, I heard a whistle from the pasture a couple times that I did not start nor respond to. I just contracted an illness today and would prefer if I could get rid of the whistling soon for it's getting a little too persistent for my liking. Anybody know anything I can do to get rid of this or what it is exactly? Hmm. And that's whistlers. Whistlers are, they can be indoors or they can be outdoors. Most of them are outdoors and most of them are in the woods. Mm-hmm. You know, somebody's on their property. They can mimic your whistle. It's very much, and we're going to have at some point, maybe this season or early next season, an episode entirely about mimics and crawlers because Ooh. those are both yeah. super creepy. Mimic is like one of the creepiest things. To yeah. Me. but And this whistlers are like tied in. A lot of people mm-hmm. say that this is a mimic. Yeah. You know, a lot of, the a lot of people that say way. that this is the Fae trying to oh, get you to follow you? them. Yeah. But this shows up so much that it just really surprises me. So whistlers. Um, and there's a whole lot of superstitions and belief involved with whistling. Well, that's the thing about it is that whistling exists as a thing across all cultures. Yeah. Yep. For various utilities or reasons yeah. jim and i have a whistle that when we're in the gro- any store and we're kind of split up and we're trying to find each other we yeah. have a whistle that we do yeah that's how we find each other like whistling is just like a normal it's, it's part a, of it's everyday like it's life, like a universal kind of. way of of communicating yes calling you know, your dog calling, calling your dog, animals and that uh, comes up to... but also it can be extremely sinister there's something really creepy there is and sinister there is 
about whistling depending on the context. And a lot of people kind of like so many of the the posts I read about whistlers. A lot of people bring up Negan from The Walking Dead because he had this whistle he does. Oh, and that video you watched, what we're going to talk about in a mm-hmm. little bit, that's Negan's whistle. That's oh, the whistle is that it? that's because that YouTube, like all the comments are like, "Oh, Negan's coming for you." So it's just a duh, duh. yeah. That's what Jim and I do to yeah. call each other. Yeah, we don't do it creepy. Oh, like people, that, <laughs> people think you're you're imitating Negan. Uh, make sure my microphone is on. All right. So from a, <laughs> I love that you're checking like a half hour in. <laughs> so from the symbolsage.com website from a September 27th, 2022 article called, quote, What Does Whistling at Night Mean? The article says, Taboos about whistling are spread all over different cultures and beliefs around the world. But those superstitions seem to only lead towards one conclusion. Whistling at night brings bad luck. It's basically considered a bad omen and is greatly discouraged by those who still follow the footsteps of their ancestors. Here are the most popular superstitions associated with whistling at night around the globe. In some parts of rural Greece, it's believed that whistling is the recognized language of evil spirits, so when someone whistles at night, those spirits haunt and punish the ones doing the whistling. Even worse, one can lose their voice or ability to speak as a consequence. There's a superstitious belief in British culture called the, quote, seven whistlers, or seven mystical birds or deities that can foretell death or a great catastrophe. The fishermen in England considered whistling at night a sin because of the risk of summoning a terrible storm and bringing death and destruction. Wow. Legends in Canada mention that one who whistles at the northern lights risks calling spirits down from the aurora. According to a First Nations tradition, whistling also attracts the, quote, stick Indians, which sounds creepy, Mm -hmm. the frightening wild men of interior and coast Salish tradition. In Mexican culture, and we've discussed this, I think when we, I think this was in a Strange States episode, Texas. In Mexican culture, whistling at night is believed to invite La Lechuza. I think it's Lechuza or Lechuza. Mm -hmm. A witch that transforms into an owl that will fly over and carry the whistler away. Mm -hmm. And I believe that showed up as a cryptid in Texas, in our Strange States, Texas. In Korea, it's believed that whistling at night summons ghosts, demons, and even other creatures not known from this world. Japanese people believe that whistling at night disturbs the quiet night, which makes it a bad omen. It is also thought to attract thieves and demons called Tengu, who abduct Mm. the whistler. This superstition is said to attract a literal snake or even a person with undesirable characteristics. Is it any kind of whistling? I think so. I think any kind of whistling. Any kind of whistling. Yeah. Okay. In China, night whistling is believed to invite ghosts into the home. Very Some, specific around night whistling. Yeah, it's all like night whistling, mm. which is weird. Some yoga practitioners also believe that they can summon wild animals, supernatural beings, and weather phenomenon just by whistling. That's the second time weather phenomenon has been yeah, brought up. Yeah, yep. Tribes in Native America believe in some sort of shapeshifter called a skinwalker by the Navajo tribe and Stekeni by another group. If something whistles back at you, it's usually believed to be one of these creatures watching you. When this happens, run away from them immediately. In Hawaii, and Hawaii shows up in both parts today, actually. Hawaii shows up in the second part, too, which is interesting. In Hawaii, whistling at night is thought to invoke the ghosts of ancient Hawaiian warriors called night marchers. Hmm. Another native Hawaiian legend says that nocturnal whistling summons the menehun, or the forest-dwelling dwarves. Several tor- tw- this is going to be a long episode. <laughs> Not twibes. Several, <laughs> several, several, twibes. several tribes and indigenous groups around the world believe that whistling at night summons evil spirits, like in central Thailand and in some parts of the Pacific Islands. The Noongar people of southwestern Australia believe that night whistling attracts the attention of Wara Warin, which are bad spirits. The Maori of New Zealand also have the superstition that the kehua, the ghosts and spirits, will whistle back to you if you whistle at night. African cultures, including Nigeria, suggested that whistling called wildfire to yards at night. Similarly, Estonia and Latvia also believe that whistling at night brings bad luck and can often cause people's houses to burst into flame. Wow. Yeah. In Arab culture, whistling at night runs the risk of luring jinns. And we're going to have an episode Mm, about jinns at some point, too. In Arab culture, whistling at night runs the risk of luring jinns, the supernatural creatures of Islamic mythology, or even Satan himself. Based on an ancient belief in Turkey, this superstition gathers the power of Satan and summons him to you. So it's interesting that so many cultures have 
this belief that it's negative that it's negative yeah you know a lot of people whistle a lot of people see whistling as a a good thing thing. yeah it's like a joyful thing but whistling at night apparently not so good around (laughs) the world i'll remember that yeah which i thought was super interesting um but and we're going to get into this after all these stories there are several theories okay um but i just never thought about whistling before but you know like We've, it's come up in a couple of that uh, yeah. episode, like stories. Yeah. But, but like superstitions involving whistling. Yeah. And there is something, like you said, there is something sinister about it. Depending Some, on the context. Depending on yeah. the context. You know, if it's a guy out working in his yard in the afternoon and he's whistling a tune, that's one yeah. thing. But if it's, if you're in the woods at night. If it's Bing Crosby, it's not super creepy. Yeah. <laughs> if you're in the woods There's at night. There's something whistling at you. In the night that you can't see. Could it be a person? Yes. Could it be a thing? Yes. Either is creepy. Yeah. I don't want either of those. It is. But it shows up a lot. Like stories of people hearing weird whistling coming from the woods or somewhere Mm -hmm. in their house show up a lot. I'll take the woods. (laughs) (laughs) If I hear whistling coming from this basement. We have quite a few Reddit stories. I'm going to keep an eye on your time because we have a lot of stories in the second part too. Okay. Uh, So... The thing is, another good thing about the Reddit stories is that ones we don't hit, we can just add to another stories episode. Yeah. You know, so I have I have us loaded up with Reddit stories for today. But the Whistler's thing is interesting, but there are podcasts, I can't think of them off the top of my head, that, that go into depth with the Whistler stories. So it's just like, eh, that's not one that can be strange sessions. Yeah. You know. So I'm going to have both screens showing okay, perfect. so you can see what time it is. Perfect. Who's so there? I you? start. Okay. Yep. So from Reddit, um, this one I this one is from History Guy three hundred. I don't know why. I usually don't use the Reddit user's name, but this one I do. And this fascinates me. And Brittany was it Brittany that says a lot of these take place in Appalachia or oh. the Appalachian Trail. And we she said we need to do an epi- episode about it because it is there's a lot tied up with Appalachia. Yeah, Alabama, there is Appalachia. a lot. Appalachia. Yeah, I don't know how to say it. I don't either. <laughs> I feel like people who are from there say Appalachian. I thought it was Appalachia. I've always said Appalachian. Like uh, the Appalachian. Yeah, I'm going to call it Creepy Apple. We're not locals, yeah, no. so obviously. So this person writes, Hello, everyone. I live in rural southwest Virginia in Appalachia. Appalachia? Appalachia. <laughs> now I'm going to be super self-conscious. It's like, how do you say pecan? Is it pecan? pecan? No, it's pecan. Pecan. See, I don't pecan. know until... Some people say pecan, Yeah, but I say pecan. I don't know until it just comes out. Um... Hello, everyone. I live in rural southwest Virginia in Appalachia, and I heard odd whistling in the woods a few days ago at night. It started when I was playing airsoft alone in the woods at about... airsoft? I think paintball. Oh, okay. Alone? Yeah. But if you have (laughs) a gun, if you have a gun, I mean, go out and shoot trees, I guess. I guess. It started when I was playing airsoft alone in the woods about 7 o'clock p.m. in almost pitch black. And then he puts in parentheses, I live a lonely existence, okay? I'm going to Google it. And was what... It is like paintball. I think airsoft, airsoft and paintball are the same thing. It's just a weird thing to play by yourself. No, because if you're practicing, you're aiming and like shooting yeah. at trees and at whistlers and at at crawlers and mimics. <laughs> Bigfoot. Yeah, you don't want to. You don't want to hit paintball. With a paintball. Probably not. <laughs> so, like that wouldn't end well. Yeah. No. I was walking around the woods behind my house. I got to a clearing just on top of a hill and sat down to take a rest. Just when I sat down, I heard an odd whistling. It was perfect whistling and whistling a tune that I had never heard before. It was clear and it sounded close, within 150 feet or less, and came directly from behind me. It would have had to have been in the woods and near the property line with one of our neighbors. It instantly gave me chills down my back and I got the feeling of being watched. I, not being an idiot and having a brain, wasted no time in sprinting full speed towards my house, hopping over rocks and limbs. The whistling stopped shortly after I got moving, but I still felt like I was being watched by something and and that something was just not right. I didn't see anything. When I did turn back to look while opening a gate, that is, but that might be because of the darkness and distance I had moved. Well, I did turn back. I didn't see anything. When I did turn back to look (laughs) when opening a gate, that is, when opening a gate, that is, but it might be because of the darkness and distance I had moved. I don't think it was a bird, as the leaves on the trees hadn't regrown yet, and it still stays cold at night and sometimes during the day, but I don't know that much about birds. I didn't see any birds that night, and everything else was quiet. Are they, they're saying like there were no leaves, so why would a bird be in the tree? Yeah. I feel like that doesn't make a lot of sense. I don't think either. Uh, Spoiler. 
that's one of the big theories about what whistlers are birds. or birds. Yeah. Actually, <sighs> when I'm sitting in my backyard, sometimes I hear a whistle that sounds like someone's whistling at me. Yeah. But it's a bird. Yeah. Yep. So that is one of the big theories about this. I also doubt it was a person as I heard no talking, no leaves crunching and any other noises. I should also mention that the whistling started out of nowhere and did not gradually get louder as if someone or something was moving closer while whistling. Mm. Mm -hmm. I've been out in these woods a decent amount of my life and had never heard anything like this before. The situation still gives me chills when I think about it. I've had the feeling of being watched in those woods, but those feelings have never been so intense and extreme as that night. Was it an animal? I should also mention that dogs occasionally bark randomly into the woods, but they weren't really barking at the moment when the whistling happened. I was hoping anyone could identify what it was. And then somebody responds. It says, quote, Whistling in the woods is kind of like hearing church bells coming from a forest during a rainstorm and then realizing there isn't a church We've there. We've talked about that, yep. haven't we? You just ignore it and move on. Do not whistle back and do not slap any sticks against a tree either. <laughs> somebody else responds and said, it's not just that they hear you, it's that they know you heard them. Mm. They're powerless until you acknowledge them, so you should never, ever answer their whistle. It's an invitation. Ugh. I'd argue that running away like the original poster did is too close to acknowledgement for comfort. You should have just walked away calmly but briskly. Easier said than done. <laughs> yeah. And then somebody else responded to that and said, you didn't see it, you didn't hear it, you don't talk about it. That is the Appalachian way. Huh. Somebody else responds, when you say tune, was it like a song of sorts? Did it sound human and intentional, or did it sound more erratic? You said it was quiet, but was it windy at all? Wind through the trees mm, is a sure. big one, too. Trying to see if maybe there could be a natural explanation, like wind through a natural funnel of sorts. I have heard birds at night myself, but that whistling sounds like a bird without any doubts. As for paranormal, there's plenty of stories from different cultures around the world about whistling or hearing your name called from the woods. I heard something similar in the woods of Maine as a kid, also in winter at night. I hightailed it back home quick. Almost universally, you did the right thing by not answering back and just calling it a day. Never acknowledge or investigate something like that. Somebody else responds, It was a song of sorts. I've never heard it before in my life, and there was no wind blowing. It sounded 100% human and intentional. Mm. Somebody else responds, it was a person messing with you. And then the original poster says, that's honestly scarier than a ghost or Bigfoot. <laughs> right. Somebody else responds, I had a similar experience while, did I say responds? Or I don't know what I said. Somebody else responds, I had a similar experience when exploring an abandoned road near my old house that ended in a dead end that was completely covered by plants and brush. Do we I, talk about that? I feel like I read a story like that. You might, but we'll see. Okay. I'd been all the way to the dead end a couple of occasions, but this time I was with my sister and we walked a fifth of the way when suddenly we heard whistling coming from both sides of the bushes that were almost laying over each other in a haunting melody. Mm -hmm. My sister and I turned to look at each other in the moment we acknowledged our mutual feeling of fear and dread and we immediately ran out of there. Somebody else says, quote, don't go whistling in the woods. You're calling something in or giving it your, or giving it, and don't say your name. You're giving it your voice for something to use as its own, which mm, is creepy. Yeah. Also, never tell the forest your name or your kids' names. Old timers used to say, have your kids in a dark so you're not calling their name into the woods outside after dark. Something out there might hear it and then try to lure them off later with your voice. No, it, oh, yuck. So <laughs> there you go. Yeah, there's, there's that mimic stuff. thing again. Yep. Now Is it your me? turn. I'm actually going to put glasses on for this. I'm going into nerd, nerd a, mode. A lot of people swear that these aren't birds, though. They said they've heard birds their mm -hmm. whole life, and there's a big difference between hearing a human whistling a tune yeah. as opposed to hearing a bird. Birds have specific calls. Mm -hmm. I mean, birds can have multiple calls, yeah. but they have specific calls. Yeah. Yep. All right. More from Reddit. About a month ago, I heard whistling coming from the north side of my property, kind of faint, at like a few minutes past 3 a.m. So many of these take place between midnight oh. and 4 a.m. Okay. too, which is weird. Yeah. <clears throat> it was a tune, just a few notes, repeating. I thought it might have been a bird, but it was approaching slowly but steadily. The closer it got, the more uneasy I got, and I became very aware of the windows that offered a view to where I sat in the living room. Why do you even have your curtains open at that time of night? <laughs> I tiptoed to the hallway and kind of hid there, not knowing really what to do. Sure, I was overreacting. 
I heard the whistling lasting about four or five seconds, silence for about 10 seconds, then repeating again until it passed the front door area, accompanied by the crunching of rocks under some weight. And That's a big note for no. me. When you hear something walking. Like something's walking. Like somebody's walking outside. And your whistling. Front. Yeah. And until it finally faded out going to the south. Scared me, and I have no idea what it was, but I can't imagine whistling back to whatever it was. Like, that's not a bird. No. This reminded me of leaving D.C. Yeah, yeah. But it was a flute, right? Yep, was... and that's going to show up a lot in the Fay. Okay. Because I have a lot of Reddit stories that involve people hearing flute sounds from the mm. woods, and that's a very specific Fay thing. So okay. there's a lot of stories about that coming up for the Fay. Do I keep going? Yep. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Another Reddit story. This took place a few years ago now, just after the panorama began. Do you think they meant pandemic? pandemic? Yeah. <laughs> Gotta love, love autocorrect. <laughs> My husband and I were watching TV in our family room together, and I heard a strange noise. I whistled for our cats in case they were getting into mischief. It's a specific whistle. One short high note followed by a longer low note. That sounds like Negan's whistle. That's like... okay. Or Negan's you want to demonstrate No, because I'm not that great at whistling. <laughs> a few seconds later, my whistle was repeated back to me from somewhere inside my house. <laughs> That's creepy. It's one thing when you it's outside and you can be like, maybe that is the wind through the trees or maybe yeah. that's a bird. No. But when it's coming from inside your house Forget somewhere, that's, that's another story. Literally dying in that moment. <laughs> the same tone and rhythm and very distinctly my whistle. I looked at my husband who confirmed that he heard, he too heard me. He Wow. I looked at my husband who confirmed that he too heard not me whistle. whistle. <laughs> Our very young children were asleep and definitely could not replicate or even whistle at all. We didn't have a smart speaker and the rest of the house was quiet and dark aside from the initial commotion and whistles. I stopped whistling for the cats that day. Someone replied with, I had this happen to me once. I was in my basement as a kid and was making up my own tune. When I stopped, the same tune was whistled back to me from somewhere in the basement, but at double the speed. Weird. <laughs> That's so creepy. Again, no. No. This like, reminds me of, there's an episode of, okay, did you watch um, Trail to Terror? It was like the first um, Destination Fear. It was like the first thing they ever did that they I recorded. don't think I watched that. So they go back to that location in one of the seasons of Destination Fear and Tanner is inside uh -huh. and he hears a whistle. And then he hear, he's like, oh, my God, I just heard a whistle. And he, he's sitting there again. And then he hears it whistle again. And then he says hello. And then it whistles really, really fast. And then he books it out of there. No. That's what reminded me yeah. of it. It was kind of like there's something so intentional yes. about that. Does, do I just keep going? Yep. I don't know when you come back in and when I stop. Oh, I'll tell you. Okay. I'm glad I read through these first because I had to look up how to pronounce yeah, some of this, this stuff. Yeah, this is the or last. This is the last stuff. one you'll read this, this time around. If people don't know, Wisconsin has a lot of Native American yes. history. I was born and raised and currently live in the very rural northwoods of Wisconsin near the UP border of Michigan on land that was originally and still somewhat sparsely populated by the o Ojibwe people. Ojibwe, yep. I had, similar, I had a similar experience this past February 2023 that I can't shake. I was solo snowshoeing an isolated trail system in the <laughs> Chiquab oh my gosh, Chiquabinet, Chiquamagan, Nicolay National <laughs> Forest. <laughs> In the Lake Superior snow belt, not far from my home. That Wow, that's like way up there. Yeah, that is way up there. It's a beautifully remote place that I've explored many times alone, often never crossing paths with another person. This time, it was a sunny late afternoon. I was again alone on a particularly scenic trail paralleling a small, fast-flowing river, which was open and only iced over on the banks, enjoying the serene scene accompanied by the sweet songs of chickadees and industrious sounds of nut hatches amplified by the cold calm. Th this is a storyteller right here. Yeah. As I got further on the trail, I noticed it suddenly got very quiet, which wasn't alarming at first as the winter woods can get very silent, especially considering our high snowfall amounts that blanket the land. Then, out of nowhere, I heard a rhythmic, deep, and reedy sound of a low but loud whistle through the brittle woods. I was captivated, as I had never heard that sound before. It had a powerful pulse to it that I can't really describe. I'm an avid birder, admittedly not an expert, but I was baffled. The noise was somewhat close when I first noticed it, but instead of being curious, I became concerned as I heard the sound getting closer to me. The sound inexplicably filled me with dread. It seemed to be traveling quickly, maybe as fast as a bounding deer, and seemed physically low, the utterance coming from somewhere just above the ground and well below the treetops. 
While I was out there, I rationalized that the strange vocalization must be from a raven. Ravens are year-round residents up north, so I'm very familiar with them. They are highly intelligent birds with complex, individualized calls that include deep sounds like croaks. However, I have never, ever in my four decades of living up here have ever heard a raven utter a sound like that noise. That day I was deep in the woods and was the first person breaking trail after a big snow, so I couldn't move fast. I decided that my best course of action was to just keep going until I got to the switchback that I would shorten my journey. As I paralleled the river from a ridge above dense with new pine growth, I heard the sound from what seemed to be between me and the river, maybe 50 yards maximum. I stopped and listened as it moved on and beyond, still paralleling the river. I couldn't see much ahead of me, and I did not hear any footfall of it breaking the snow. Honestly, as irrational as I felt, I was grateful to be hidden. I hauled it to the trailhead and got out of there as fast as I could. As soon as I got home, I started researching and seeking out any information on what bird or animal could have created that vocalization. Nothing I found matched that sound. To this day, I just tell myself it must have been a raven, but I know in my own small understanding of the world that it was something else. It's creepy. That's really creepy. <laughs> yeah. Yep. So, some more from Reddit. Somebody writes, I heard something similar over a period of several weeks shortly after we moved into our new house about two and a half years ago. I'd hear it outside at night in my backyard. Our old place was a 15-year-old development with no soul and no trees. This house is older than I am, with two huge oaks and a small pond out back. Compared to what we left, it's incredibly verdant and beautiful, and all the suburban wildlife knows how to get over the fences to drink from the pond. I fell immediately in love with all the life out there. When we first moved in, I'd sit on the deck for hours as day turned to night, sometimes with a bottle of wine, usually with a pipe, just watching the animals, reading, and listening to the water and wind in the trees, and sometimes this weird whistling. It was creepy, almost like someone deliberately trying to whistle creepy, like something out of a horror movie. This neighborhood is lovely, but surrounded by a rough area. Gunshots, and I think it's supposed to be meth heads, but they have metal heads. <laughs> I, don't, I, metal I wouldn't heads. worry about the metal heads. No, I wouldn't either. Gunshots <laughs> and meth heads are only about a quarter of a mile away. So my first thought was that it was some weirdo messing with me, but my reading spot is secluded and impossible to see from the street. Okay, maybe a creepy neighbor messing with me? Awesome. Except I walked the yard on several occasions trying to pinpoint where the whistling was coming from and it seemed to move around as I walked around. I'd start towards it and then it would stop and then it would suddenly start up again from a different direction, sometimes directly behind me. It was a human whistle, but no human could have moved like that without me noticing. Eventually, I decided it was either a highly motivated, very clever creep, an outdoor neighborhood ghost, or some unfamiliar thing my brain was misinterpreting. Either way, I wasn't going to be scared out of my brand new peaceful place, so I just ignored it. After a couple of months, it stopped, and I never heard it again. Hmm. Somebody else responds and says, This has actually been happening to me too for years now. We moved into our current house about four years ago. My husband is on a night shift schedule, and I do freelance work, so we are often up late into the night. More than a few times, I'll be home alone with the dogs when he will leave to grab some snacks from the gas station down the road or something, and while he's gone, I'll hear whistling. My husband does this whistle, so I figured it was him at first, and even when it happens now, our dogs perk up and run to the front door waiting for him to come in because we just literally heard him right outside the door whistling, but then no one comes in. Ugh. I get up to check, and his car is not there. The dogs stare out the window whimpering the way they do when someone is outside in our front yard. The whistling seems to always happen once or twice more after my initial realization that it's not my husband, and then it stops. I've looked, but I've never seen anyone. It's always when he's not there. Yep. Yuck. I had a very bright motion light installed outside my front door, and it's never been tripped by this invisible whistler. Well, that's interesting. Yep. If it were a person, you would yeah. expect that to yep. happen. Next, somebody else writes, So about two days ago, I was with some friends playing with a light-up frisbee. It was getting pretty late and was pitch black outside. I live in the backwoods of my town, and there are no streetlights around for miles. I had my back to the woods and was enjoying myself until all of a sudden I heard a whistle come from the woods. So, stupidly, my first instinct was to whistle back no. and see if I was just hearing things. It wasn't, I wasn't, I didn't do that for more than a second, and then something whistled back to me from my pitch black woods. My friends and I were terrified and backed away from the woods. To make things worse, I whistled a few tunes in different patterns, and whatever this was did them back to me perfectly. After a few minutes, my friends and I took deep breaths and walked into the woods with flashlights. Well, okay then. We found nothing out there. No prints, no signs of anything passing through the woods. 
When we got back to the street, we got one last whistle like it was saying goodbye to us from the woods. I have no idea what was going on or what that was, but it freaks us out. It's a manual of what not to do. Yeah. Okay, you're next. (laughs) They're so creepy. All right. This doesn't creep me out as much as the second part does, though. I think I I feel like I feel like these are. I think this creeps me out more because it's more likely to happen to you than the other one. Yeah. Because it could be a person or a bird. (laughs) Yeah. The first time I experienced this one occasion, I was 16 years old in my bedroom. I have had other ghost encounters, but none like this, and nothing like I ever thought I would experience. So as I was laying in my bed, having the hardest time trying to fall asleep, per usual, I heard weird footsteps going up and down the hall. Bedrooms were on the second floor. Then down the steps going around the kitchen, living room, and back up the stairs and down the hall. I didn't think much of it considering I had two older brothers, who one who was always coming home late from being out with friends. But then it kept on happening. In the same repeated steps, up and down the hall, down the stairs, and back up again as if it were a pattern. So I finally thought to myself, this is silly. I'm just going to go back out there when I hear the steps and see if it's one of my brothers. Heard the steps, peeked out my bedroom door, nothing. So I laid back down trying to convince myself it could be anything. Probably just my imagination going wild because it's 2 o'clock in the morning and minds usually go to the worst of things anytime we hear a noise late at night. But then the whistling starts. Now a little backstory. I never learned how to whistle, so I thought I would start trying. But for some reason, I would always whistle the same short, basic whistle. I would start with a lower pitch, swoop up into a higher pitch, and back down to the first pitch. I don't know why. It's just what I did to start getting better at whistling. Now back to the creepy stuff. As this thing was so obviously trying to get some sort of attention, it starts whistling the same pitch that I was earlier. Down, up, back down. That sound caught my attention instantly. I was obviously so freaked out that I took forever to fall back asleep that night. I thought it was over because I didn't hear it for a day or so, but then I heard it again. I was in the living room late at night watching George Lopez as one does when it's late at night and nothing else is on. And I hear the whistle again. No footsteps this time. Just the eerie whistle that I was so familiar with. Sounded like it was coming from the kitchen, which was on my left. But as it kept going, it started to sound like it was getting closer. Then I heard it like it was right next to my ear almost. Freaked me out so bad I didn't know what to do. Flash forward a couple of weeks from then. I was still hearing it late at night, but this night in particular my boyfriend was with me. We were in the living room watching a movie when I started to hear the whistling again. Excited to know that someone was with me this time but still just as freaked out because I knew he would be leaving soon and I would be pretty much all alone, freaked out again. So I paused the TV and asked if he heard the whistling. He said no and I told him just wait. Sure enough, it did the same whistling that creeped me out to my core. He was freaked out, but tried to blame it on any other thing to try and ease my nerves. But I knew it couldn't be anything other than some type of paranormal thing. A couple months afterwards, I realized I haven't heard that whistling in a while. I was spending the night at my boyfriend's house. He was in his room in the basement, and we were getting ready for bed. He eventually fell asleep, but I, of course, was still wide awake watching Friends. It was always either Friends or George Lopez. Don't at me. Don't come at me. (laughs) Don't come at me. When I started hearing it again at my boyfriend's house That's what's house creepy is time. that it followed from yeah. like one house to the, yeah. the next. This is when I started to realize it was following me. No idea why, but that sent chills up my spine. So flash forward again a few months later. Me and my boyfriend, of course, were at my house getting ready to leave to go to his house. One of the other brothers were home, so I yelled that we were getting ready to leave. No response. I had to urge to look around the corner to see why he wasn't responding. He was on the living room floor over, I think think she meant over, he, she meant overdosing, overdosing on some pills he was taking, a long story. I called 911 and they sent an ambulance and took him to the nearest hospital. While we were in the waiting room at the hospital, my boyfriend said he was going to the bathroom real fast. Now it was just me in this waiting room. No one else was there. Then I heard that same chilling whistle I have heard way too <laughs> many times so before. Creepy. Yeah, this is like a movie. I yeah, feel like this could like be a movie. From like her house to the boyfriend's house to now in the it's hospital. Like it follows, but yeah. it's a whistle. Yeah, it follows. It's so good. <laughs> it's so good. I ran outside the waiting room just to see when my boyfriend would come around the corner. I didn't want to be alone in that waiting room. I didn't want to be in that waiting room alone, especially after that. That was just way too much for me. So I've heard the whistling a few times after that, but I haven't heard it in the last three to four years. I'm almost 23 now. Does anyone have similar experiences or know what this means? I'm so confused as to why this thing started in the first place, why me, and why it was following me. Maybe that was its way of trying to comfort me, knowing my brother had just overdosed, but it would know that freaks me out. 
I don't know what to think of it, obviously. It's probably not such a good spirit, but I would love some feedback. Next one. It's interesting. Some of these are close to home for us. Very close to home. This is a true story that happened when I was 16, maybe 17, in the woods of Lilano County, Michigan. I was on vacation with family in northern Michigan when we visited a family friend who had lived in the center of the county in a dense forest. I remember when we pulled up the road, the house... Oh, this is the one that I thought you were talking about, maybe. Okay. I remember when we pulled up the road, the house was on a gravel road instead of a paved road. I remember looking down the gravel road and seeing it go down a hill and turn to the left in the forest. A few hours passed by and I decided to go and check out where the gravel road went. I remember feeling extremely nervous because we were in black bear country as I grew up in the suburbs of Chicago and never experienced bears before. When I had gotten to the top of the hill, I remember hearing birds chirping and lots of frogs croaking. The forest felt alive and I did not feel terribly unsafe, only nervous because of the possible presence of bears. As I started walking down the hill, I started hearing, I, I started whistling the Hunger Games four-tone whistle. <laughs> As I got midway down the hill, I noticed that the birds and frogs stopped making noise and the forest fell silent. At this point, my instincts kicked in and I knew something was wrong. I remembered learning that the forest goes silent when there's a predator around. Yet, I still kept going down the hill. I was determined to know what was at the bottom of the hill. I was still whistling the same four-tone whistle when I heard something whistle it back perfectly. It made the exact sound that I had made. It sounded very oddly humanoid, like there was a person watching me, a predator. I remember being frozen in fear, just staring at the area of forest that it came out of before turning around and walking back up the hill. When the house came into view again, I sprinted until I got inside and did not leave anyone's eyesight for the rest of the night. Since then, I have not had any encounters like this, and I have never been back to the area. I don't know if it was something paranormal or an actual person watching me. Both equally terrify me to yeah. this day. Agreed. And I think I have one more here. Had something similar happen to me. Never saw a person and it was always around 3 a.m. Weird tone too. Started high pitched and then low pitched. Several times I happened to be outside when I heard it and it came from thin air almost. Left a weird eerie feeling like it wanted to be noticed. My girlfriend and I would do our best to ignore it. It was really quite scary when it happened simply because of how ethereal it seemed. It was right outside from the street and there wouldn't be any sound of footsteps and it would start and continue for roughly an hour until it faded away. I had motion cameras and lights and they never caught anything despite it coming from right under the window in their view. <laughs> That's what's so creepy. Yeah. Agreed. Okay, now I'm going to jump over a bunch of stories because this is actually getting longer than I expected okay. and I want to do the second half. So I'm going right to this famous one that this was like a big... A creepy pasta that's real, supposedly. Okay. Like anytime you talk about whistlers, this one comes up. It's a famous whistler story. Okay. And there's a video that accompanies. Oh, this. is that this what is, you yeah. sent me? Yep. Ugh. So this one comes that was from. Very creepy. I can't. I don't know his name, but this one's like the big famous story. He writes, I've been waiting a long time to tell Reddit the full story of The Whistler. The story requires many details, but it's unexplainable, creepy, and it's hundred percent true. I also have video evidence. When I was about eight years old, I was taking my dog for a walk through the neighborhood with my mom. It was maybe 11 p.m. We lived next to a swamp and woods area on the edge of our neighborhood in Lansing, Michigan. I remember wow. being, yeah, <laughs> I remember <laughs> it being very silent and kind of windy. From down in the swamp, we heard somebody whistling at us. It sounded kind of like a bird, but each whistle was different enough where the lack of consistency made it human-like. The whistle sounded higher and then lower. I can't really describe it. That's a Negan whistle, I think. My mom had a concerned, slightly terrified look on her face and grabbed my hand and said that we need to go inside quickly. I didn't understand because I was too young, but seeing my mom freak out about it made me freak out about it too. After a while, I kind of forgot about it. Two years later, I was taking my dog out again late at night. There was a large bush that could easily obscure a person behind it just next to our front door. As I was finishing the walk, the whistling noise started again. Same pitches, same inconsistent human-like tones. As soon as I heard it, a chill went down my spine as I remembered exactly the feeling of seeing my mom, terrified, looking down into the swamp at something that I couldn't see. Maybe she couldn't either. I ran inside as fast as possible. Years went by and I thought about it less and less. I've only told a handful of people about it and eventually it slipped from my mind. Fast forward to last summer. I'm 24, started dating my girlfriend Sarah. We moved out to South Dakota for work. For Independence Day, we decided to go to Pierre, South Dakota, and watch the fireworks along the bank of the Missouri River. There was a free camping spot behind the hospital where you could pitch your tent, hang out, and see the fireworks up the river. 
We were near the end. There's a video for this, so I'm going to post it in the group. We were near the end of the campground, and there were very few people around us. As I'll it was, link to the video, yep, too. As it was getting dark, the fireworks began. They were pretty far away, so the illumination they brought was very little. Thus, we had to sit right at the edge of the river to be able to see them. A huge thunderhead was moving in, and a storm was imminent, so the air seemed electric and the wind was picking up. The atmosphere was eerie, to say the least. The police boats heralded all the other boats off the river and left our area to go do that elsewhere. Most of the other campers walked up the river to have a better view of the fireworks, but Sarah and I stayed back and were drinking PBR Tall Boys and kicking it. <laughs> PBR Tall Boys. Mm -hmm. Suddenly, we heard the sound of a paddle methodically dipping into the water. We saw a figure steering a canoe. We saw a figure steering a canoe about 20 meters offshore. Sarah decided to go get more beers from the car, leaving me alone to stare at this mystery person in the canoe. And then the person whistled at me. My entire body was frozen and covered in goosebumps. It was the exact same whistler from my childhood more than a decade earlier. I looked at the figure, but it was much too dark to discern who it could be. They were wearing a hat. When they were perpendicular to the shore for me, they stopped paddling, turned the canoe to face directly at me, and whistled right at me. So I couldn't tell from the video. You I, sent yeah, that there was somebody yeah. on the water. There is. There is. It sounded like it was just coming from no, somewhere. No, you can see somebody canoeing I'll in the water. I'll have to watch on TV. They didn't say anything. They just whistled at me a couple more times, turned the canoe 180 degrees, and paddled out of sight. I'm a videographer, so I already had my camera by my side and was taking video of the fireworks. As the canoe was almost out of sight, I grabbed my camera and got a shot of them whistling as they as they paddled away. When Sarah came back from getting beer, she was very confused as to why I was so freaked out. When I explained, she was freaked out a bit too. I was convinced we would both be murdered that night. How did this whistling <laughs> person follow me after 14 years all the way to South Dakota? Was it a coincidence? Why was it the same exact whistling noise? Who was that person and where did they go? So many questions still unanswered. To this day, I'm more afraid of being outside in the dark where I might hear that whistling again. I feel like it's a very common whistle though. It is. It is. Um, and then he posts he post a link to the video. He says, while I was getting shots of the firework, I heard the whistling starting. I was too afraid at that moment to point the camera directly at the canoe, so I just turned my microphone towards it and kept the low-key shot facing downriver towards the fireworks. If you wear headphones, you can hear it better. It's the two-note whistle, high then low. You can hear me ask my girlfriend, are you whistling? Is that you? She said no, but I wasn't sure, so I told her to stop it because I was getting scared. The last, in the last shot, I boosted the brightness as much as I could to still make out the person in the canoe. It looks like they're wearing a red sweater or something. And we're going to post a link to this. Krista watched the video. Mm -hmm. um, and somebody responded. It seems to go on for yeah, a while. Yeah, somebody responded to this saying, The other night around 10 or 11, my mom and I were watching a movie. It had been raining hard, so there was basically just like white noise coming from outside. As I'm watching the movie, for some reason or another... Your whistler story popped in my head. Then I remember the actual whistle with its inexplicably chilling, distinct tone. Then I heard the faintest sound of the whistle, but it was so faint that I thought it might have just been in my head, kind of like when you can hear and see things in your head when there's no actual noise. But then it got a little louder. From outside, I kind of had a moment where I was struck cold and in shock with disbelief. There's no way I'm actually hearing this whistle now. The next one is louder, and now I know I'm not imagining it. So I pause the halfway. I pause halfway through the whistle and turn to my mom. It ends a moment later. Another whistle. This time it's very loud, as if whoever is whistling is standing right outside my window, which was open. I hate that. I literally felt a jolt. Open. The window is open. <coughs> Ugh, that's even worse. I literally felt a jolt go through me, and I just yelled, "Holy poop! Did you hear that?" <laughs> and my mom said something along the lines of, "Yeah, that whistling sound. I thought it was from the movie." Then she goes on to mimic the whistle, which is the same exact one that's linked to in the original video. This legit gave me chills and freaked me out. Even creepier is how it just stopped the moment I called attention to it and muted the TV. And since we live in an apartment complex, there's constantly people walking around outside you can hear. But when the whistling stopped, it was just silence. Plus, it was pouring rain out. Thankfully, the legend states that if you hear the whistle loud and clear, that means it's far away. When it's quiet or in the distance, that means the whistler is closer. Yeah, somebody commented that yeah, on the YouTube which is, video. which is weird. I've never heard that. Actually, that makes it even creepier because that means those hushed ones I heard meant it was somewhere closer during the time. What did I hear? So... I also, I texted you that sound yeah. travels really weird yeah. over water too. Yep. It could have been somebody not even, it might not even been the person in the canoe. Yeah. Like, yeah. I don't know. Oh, totally. Uh, I have theories. I'm just going to go through these quicker than I wanted to because I want to get to the second half. Okay. But theories, number one, birds or critters. 
Yeah. Uh, somebody said, got crows or ravens in the area. They're super good at mimicking sounds. Mm-hmm. They can talk better than parrots if trained. My guess it was a crow or a raven has associated that whistle sound with you, so now it'll reply to you when you whistle to it. Mm-hmm. I've read multiple stories where people mistake the distinct high-low whistle of a chickadee song as something sinister, and I mm-hmm. think that's what the whistler video sounds like is a chickadee, mm-hmm. which it could be. I do feel like bird, like we have a lot of birds around here. I'm a bird nerd. I, they really die down at night though. Yeah. Yeah. It's weird to like three in the morning. To, yeah. They, <laughs> to you would not hear a bird song at three in the morning. Uh, it's silent sometimes when I get up and as soon as the sun or the sky just starts to get light out, that's yeah. when the birds start yep. singing. Again. Somebody responds. There's a black cap chickadee call that sounds just like the, the call in the video, the whistle in the video. Uh, somebody else writes there are birds that can mimic whatever they like. Blue jays are a great example. Oh, there's yeah. Uh, back when I had bird loud. feeders, I would whistle to some of the birds that came for a snack, and I whistled to them so often they kind of got used to it. They'd either whistle back or look at me like "WTF are you?" I love that. Yeah, uh, raccoons. Somebody said raccoons make a whistling noise oh, and will move closer to you because you're calling them. And then somebody said, "Download the Merlin Bird app." I'm literally opening it on my phone. Did you right know I was going to say that? No, because I was going to try oh, to find... that's weird because it says download the Merlin Bird app and see because it can record. You can... Yeah, you can record a bird. Yeah. So that's the chickadee's yeah. whistle. That actually is but what you... It does sound... That sounds like a bird. It sounds different in the video, though. It yeah, that sounds like, like a... Hu- like a no, it sounds like a human... So... Yeah, the video sounded like a person. That's theory number one. Birds are critters. Uh, theory number two, humans. Somebody wrote yeah. meth squatch. somebody else said i'm a little late to this post but i think it's definitely just a person we have someone like this in our neighborhood who walks around a lot usually at night listening to music and headphones and and when headphones and mumbling along like he doesn't know the words but just doing it really loudly so it could be a human but if there's a human prowling around in your woods at three o'clock whistling there's something wrong with that yeah i'd rather have it be a, a squonk or something yeah Somebody else says the wind through the trees, sure. which is 100% plausible, mm-hmm. but I feel like there's a difference between... Would it be a tune, though? It wouldn't be a tune. It would be like a... A constant. A constant, yeah. yeah. I think you'd know the difference. Theory number four, legendary creatures. One of them is, I mentioned Big before, foot. is oh. <laughs> La Lechuza, oh. which is the owl thing. Yeah. But also Bigfoot. That yep. is a phenomenon with Bigfoot. And a couple whistling. people mentioned Elsie Bone. Hmm. And they write, in my country of Venezuela, there is a legend about a guy called El Cibone, the Whistler, a sort of damned soul that warns people of their coming death. Uh, El Cibone, the Whistler, is a legendary figure in Colombia and Venezuela associated with certain regions, usually described as a lost soul. One story states that this person was a son that was a spoiled brat whose parents catered to his every wish. One afternoon, he demanded for his father to go hunt him a deer, his favorite meat. But when the father does not find a deer and returns empty-handed, the son kills the father and cuts out his heart and liver and has the mother cook them for dinner. That's rude. That is very rude. The mother finding this meat is tough starts to suspect something is wrong. She discovers these organs are are her own husband's innards and curses her son for eternity. Afterwards, the grandfather ordered the youth to be tied to a post in the middle of the countryside and lashed until his back was destroyed. His wounds were then cleaned with alcohol, chili peppers, and lemon juice. Oh my gosh. A sack full of his father's remains were placed on his wounded back, and he was released with his grandfather's two rabid, starving dogs set upon him. Before releasing him, his grandfather condemned him to carry the bones of his father for all eternity. That is gruesome. The creature has a characteristic whistle that resembles the musical notes C, D, E, F, J, E, A, and then B in that order. It's a wow. very specific, okay. a very specific tune. So that's creepy. Yeah. Um. And El Silbador uh, in Colombia. So there's there's creatures that are supposedly whistlers. Okay. But they're legendary creatures. Um, but then we get to theory number five, which is mimics and crawlers and skinwalkers and gin, mm. which is a whole mm-hmm. ball of wax. I mean, the stories where whatever it is duplicates your whistle back to you. Yes. That's a no. That's it could a be a no. bird. I mean, it could 100% be a raccoon or a bird that you're whistling to and, and they birds whistle are smart. back to you. Yeah. yeah. Some and birds. a bird hopping from tree to tree would not make Any sounds sound, like it yeah. was. You know, but we're going to have episodes on mimics and crawlers and the gin in the future. So we're going to delve more into that later. Uh, but a lot of people say uh, Wendigos can supposedly do this, mm. which I've, I don't remember ever hearing that they could whistle to you. 
Theory number six, I'm not going to read the stories because they're both kind of long, so we're going to skip the stories, but we'll put them in another stories episode, and that is Bigfoot. Mm -hmm. Apparently, Bigfoot has a, a whistling thing. Mm -hmm. I thought it was just like the tree the tree knocking, and mm -hmm. but apparently Bigfoot can whistle, and mm -hmm. some of these could be Bigfoot. I think, allegedly, Big Feet <coughs> use whistles to communicate with each other along with tree knocks and whoops. Yeah. And it's it's understandable because it's such a method of communication that, like, anybody can do. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know? Yeah. So okay, are we scrolling down to then... Where does it And then start? somebody writes, I think it may just all be in the intent. If you're just whistling day and night, then watching beings will be like, oh, that's just some dude whistling. But if you specifically start reaching out to them, you're inviting personal interaction. And then I suppose it's best to know who you're interacting with and what your interaction means. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's So true. what do you think about whistlers? What do you think? Creepy. Do you think? Creepy, but could be humans, <laughs> could be birds. I'm... Humans, I have a hard time believing. I mean, meth heads and stuff, I get it. But being yeah. out in somebody's <laughs> woods at 2 o'clock in the morning. I don't think it has to be a meth head, though. <laughs> no, but being out in somebody's woods at 2 o'clock in the morning and then yeah. whistling back to them. Yeah. Like I said, I would rather have it be one of these creatures and have some dude in the woods, like, messing with me, like, whistling. 100%. I'd rather it be paranormal. <laughs> uh, but I, I, there's so many stories about stuff whistling that I do write a lot of them off as birds mm -hmm. or other sounds like that, maybe wind through the trees. But I think there's just so much that there has to be something behind it. Mm -hmm. Something yeah, intelligent. Something intelligent behind yeah. it. And I don't know if it's a specific creature or or multiple types or, or of creatures. but it's a very mimic thing to do where you whistle you whistle to try to get somebody to follow you into the woods it's very much a faith thing where they're trying to get you to follow them into the woods yeah. the ones that happen inside their own houses though are i don't like, know how to explain that. those yeah i don't know how to explain those but then i'm going to end this first section with somebody saying look into the missing 411 phenomena mm. there are various cryptids who impersonate human sounds to lure their victims into the woods that live in the appalachian region the Appalachian Mountains are older than the evolution of bones. Really, I'm not kidding. I 100% believe that there are older, more dangerous things in those woods besides bears and bobcat. Mm. These precautionary tales were shared between countless generations for generations for a reason. There's a this this fascinated me. This sentence they write. There's a reason the uncanny valley phenomenon, where something looks almost human but isn't, that freaks people out the way it does. Mm. Like, almost like there was something in people's past that looked human, but was just off enough that it gave us this primitive fear. That's mm -hmm. what the uncanny valley thing is, is that it's this primitive fear of whatever these creatures are dredging up that, mm -hmm. that we ran into. I just found that a really fascinating yeah. sentence. Any Native American who lives in the southwest, south, southwest of the USA will tell you that whistling at night is a bad idea for the same reasons. Going way back in time, cultures who had no way of communicating tell similar stories of tall, thin creatures with sunken eyes that lure people into the woods with whistling. Mm. There's something out there, and it's dangerous. I'm not saying don't go to the woods, but I'm just saying be safe out there and mind your own business. You don't whistle. So that's whistlers. Yeah. Creepy. Creepy. I find this way creepier than whistlers, actually. I mean, it's definitely creepy. It is. Whistlers, I think, are more prevalent. Yeah. But the second part is the faceless or slash mannequin people. Mm, I had never heard of this. The go-to for this is the Lazy Masquerade podcast because they're the mm. ones that really have done deep dives on these. Okay. That's why they kept referencing. Oh, yes. Hitting, hitting my so now I'm going to have you read, scroll down and read the first story. Okay. Yes. I so think this I'm is there. bar none. Yep. Does it say chunk four? Yep. <laughs> okay. Oh, so this is bar none. What fascinates me about these, a little spoiler, so many of these involve seeing somebody driving. Yeah, what was that? I don't know, but it happens I a lot. I noticed it was a common theme. It happens, a, which is weird. So, jump in. No face. Faceless drivers. We have driverless cars now. I guess we can have faceless drivers. <laughs> faceless drivers. So, this is barn on the most baffling and terrifying event of my life to this day. I still haven't the slightest clue what they were. If any of you have an encounter, encounter with something similar, I would love to hear about it. What makes my encounter unique is that it takes place in Huntington Beach, California, one of the biggest urban centers on the planet far, far away from any kind of forest. When I was a young boy, about seven, my mother would often take me on trips to R.R. R. Donnelly Financial, where she worked as a salary woman. And then he, he, he or she gives a link to Wikipedia in case you don't think it's a real place. I'm not sure why we went in, but... 
There would be about an hour long car ride where I really couldn't do much of anything the entire time. So I would like to look outside and read the signs or comment on cool looking cars, you know, things most kids would do in the car. However, on three separate occasions, I can quite vividly remember looking into the cab of another car and seeing a person that did not have a face. Some people report encounters where they could see the indention of the facial features, but no eyes, ears, lips, etc. But the ones I saw literally looked like a dome of flesh. The best description on the internet I have found is like fabric stretched over a softball. <laughs> That's so creepy. A very big softball, maybe. It's... That's really creepy. The moment I would look at all of look at all of them and feel the fear about not them not having a face, they would immediately turn their head to look right back over at That's me. That's what creeps me out. Yeah. Almost like these things are they have some kind of sense. Yeah, they sense that you notice they're not Even though what they they're can't supposed see to be. You? Yeah, they yeah. Would, and so they just turn and stare at you. Naturally, as a young boy, I was absolutely petrified, and I would dart back inside the car, praying they didn't see me. However, whenever I would peek out from below the car window, they would always be looking right at me. The vibe I got from all of them was extremely unsettling as well. Whenever I would stare into that faceless visage, I got the sense that they were extremely peed off. As they wanted to physically, as if they wanted to physically attack me if there weren't two cars in the way and we weren't in the middle of the street. It was like all of them hated my guts just for being able to see them in the first place. And that's actually that's, a common theme, That's too. very much like the movie They Live. Like, I don't know if you ever saw They Live. It's a really good movie with Roddy Piper have. where you put he gets these glasses that you can put on and you can see that a lot of people oh. around like are aliens. Oh. And you can only see them in these yeah, glasses. But then it. you can see that like the billboards all have subliminal messages that say oh. obey and reproduce and eat and stuff. And it's really it's a really good that's movie. It's a concept. super good movie actually. But that's kind of what this reminds me of. Like we're seeing these things that we're not supposed to be seeing and they're mad about it. Okay. Now, seeing as I was seven, some details were lost, but I do specifically remember that one had a business suit on and another had a lime green shirt. And the last one may have been a woman, but I really can't remember. The fourth encounter was definitely the most vivid and scariest of them all, as this one took place when I was walking around and didn't have a car to protect me. I was walking in the Huntington Beach Public Library with my mother. This encounter took place when I was nine. They have a big park there with a trail that is a few miles long. The day was literally perfect, not a single cloud in the sky. Me and mom were enjoying the weather and the atmosphere of the place when over the hill a young woman who was jogging came over. She had purple yoga pants and a blue tank top and a very fit, extremely attractive by my standards today, body and a ponytail with like brown hair, but she has no face. Anyway, as soon as I saw her, my blood ran cold. Here was one of those things I saw a few years ago running right for me and I could literally do nothing about it. My throat closed up and I couldn't call for help or anything like that. I'd just wait for her to get to me. She kept running my way and like the others, she also locked eyes with me. I could even see her track me as she ran. At that moment, I just waited for the inevitable to happen. But the vibe I got from her was very different than any of the others. She seemed rather confused as if she was saying, wait, how can you see me right now? She ran past me, and me and mom continued on our walk without me mentioning a thing to her. I wish I could give you something more entertaining and say I have been seeing these things my whole life, but that just isn't the case. After that last encounter, I never saw one ever again. Just a particularly scary set of circumstances from my childhood, I guess. What is highly unusual is that my mother and literally everyone else in the park had a full view of this woman, but none of them even seemed remotely alarmed that a faceless woman was walking amongst them. What do I think they were? Honestly, I couldn't tell you no matter how many encounters I hear about them from Lazy Masquerade and the rest of the YouTubers I have found. I have never found out anything more about them besides what I already know. While in my personal opinion, they are shapeshifter beings that blend into society and present to be human, but are definitely not human. I would put money on the fact that you may have been around them, but would never even know it at all due to them being disguised. Plus, as a man who is into physical fitness today, you need to be in the gym for a solid amount of hours to get a good-looking body like that. <laughs> I, don't that. I don't know what that has to do with anything. So even that—that that is really weird. Yeah. So even more people besides those in the park could see her too. Ser oh, I see. She'd have to be going to the gym a lot, I guess, is what he's saying. Seriously, if any of you have an encounter with whatever these things are, I am all ears. Someone replied to this. I've had this happen back in 2013 to 2014, coming home late from work in SoCal, Pasadena area. Off the, t 
<laughs> this is so California. It Off is. the 210 freeway. <laughs> if you had saw, have you ever seen that Saturday Night Live skit? No. California. No, I haven't. And all they talk about is how to get places on oh. different freeways. <laughs> no, it's really funny. That. If you head south after the freeway ends, you come to a T. I was making a left and the faceless woman was making a right. It was like she started to shake in anger because I saw her. That creeps her. me out. Yeah, I that's really that creepy. That creeps me out. The shaking, yeah. She was in a yellow old school wagon. I was terrified and slammed on the gas on a red light. This was like 11 p.m. Someone replied to this. The 210 ends on California Avenue. <laughs> it's just so funny to me. It's very <laughs> typical. The T goes right to Orange Grove where the Rose Parade starts. And on the left is the Huntington Hospital. It could have been a burn patient or suicide attempt patient. Okay. Yeah. That's okay. interesting. Yeah. I, I'm going to read something about that in a little bit. Um, reply to this. I don't think so. I stared for about 10 to 15 seconds because I was trying to comprehend WTF. WTF. <laughs> I was looking at. The longer I stared, the more violently she shook. She had brown, semi-curly hair. There was nothing where her eyes were supposed to be. No mouth. The only detail I don't remember is if she had a nose or not. Looked like she was wearing a tan raincoat and had a sunflower hat <laughs> it's just on. So weird. Yeah, that's it's really so weird, weird to me. So, like, you mentioned the burn victim thing. Yeah. So, one of the possible theories, you could look at somebody like Raymond Robinson, also known as the Green Man. This comes from Wikipedia. Raymond Robinson was eight years old when he was injured by an electrical line as he climbed a pole and reached for a bird's nest. The bird carried a the bridge carried a trolley and had electrical lines of mm. both twelve hundred and twenty two thousand volts, Dang. which were responsible for the death of another boy less than a year earlier. Robinson survived, defying doctors' expectations, but he was severely disfigured. He lost his eyes, nose, and right arm. Robinson lived in Coppell, Pennsylvania, and spent his days at home with relatives making doormats, wallets, and belts to sell. Because of his appearance, he rarely ventured out during the day. However, at night, he went for long walks on a quiet stretch of, stretch of straight state route 351. With somebody? By himself. He feeling, had no eyes. <laughs> feeling his way along with a walking stick. Okay. Groups of locals regu regularly gathered to search for him walking along the road. Robinson usually hid from his curious neighbors, but would sometimes exchange a short, short conversation or a photograph for beer or cigarettes. Wow. Some were friendly, others cruel, but none it's of like his... they treat him like a circus freak. Yeah, exactly. None of them, none of his encounters deterred him from his nightly walks. He was struck by cars more than once. That's horrible. Oh Robinson became a local myth in the Pittsburgh area, and his real story was obscured by urban legend. In the stories, he's referred to as the Green Man, and as a boy, he climbed an electrical pole to see a bird's nest and was shocked. Um, the story states that when he grew older, he hid in an abandoned house. The famed nickname of Green Man came from his skin, which was purported to be green because of the electrical shock he suffered in the stories. Hmm. Through several generations, Robinson's story has been passed on so many times now that his name and real history have been overshadowed by the ghost story that grew out of them. He died in 1985 at the age of 74. So it's plausible that some of these people are burn victims or had something happen, but I don't know. Yeah. But that's one, that's one possibility. <clears throat> Somebody from Reddit writes, This morning I went for a drive to attend an appointment I had scheduled. It was early in the morning, and I was still groggy due to the fact that mornings and I are not very good friends. Coffee did not even have a chance to do its work yet. The traffic was heavy as I casually noticed the people in the opposite direction going about their business. I noticed a woman in her vehicle, but her facial features were heavily distorted. It was brief as she was driving by, and I didn't get a great look, but I could not make out any eyes or any discernible mouth. I noticed eyebrows, but mostly the eyes and mouth just seemed blurry. I kind of shrugged it off and forgot about it until my mother sent me a text message this evening. My mother told me she just lost her friend to suicide, unfortunately. She said she went for a walk. My guess is to manage her thoughts. I often do this myself when I feel overwhelmed with life. She told me her friend's burial was today. Now, I don't necessarily think her friend's passing is related to my encounter, but it's why my, but it's why my mother was outside in this late hour by herself. She said she came upon a large man standing by himself in a street close to her home. My mother is the caring type, but also confident in her ability to defend herself. So she called out to him and asked him how he was doing. He did not answer. My mother wondered why he didn't acknowledge her. She walked up to him, and when she got close to him, she said he had no face. There was just darkness. Needless to say, this unsettled her. She went inside her home and told her husband to go see what was wrong with this person. Since this has just happened, I have no idea if that faceless man is still standing in their street. I'm currently waiting on her reply. I did a quick Google search and found a word for what it could be. Napira Bo is a Japanese legend of a faceless person. And he writes, I've never heard of it before, but it's interesting. 
<clears throat> so when we get to Napira Bowl, this comes from the Grimoire of Horror website. It says, the Napira Bowl of Japan, while also known as the, quote, faceless ghost, isn't actually one of the country's yure, despite, despite being referred to as a ghost. It is, in fact, one of Japan's many yokei. We need to do an episode about Japanese mm-hmm. legends because I don't know what any of these mean. Specifically, one of the obake, or the change creature, subset of shape changers. These strange shapeshifters have a pretty simple goal, just to scare unwary humans, especially the lazy or idle. Like all the best shapeshifters from around the world, they are great mimics. On top of being able to look like any random stranger, they can impersonate the loved ones of a chosen victim to get extra close, seemingly with no limits or easy tells. They will lay their trap and do their best to get the human they have chosen to subject to the horrific prank as close as possible. When as near as possible with the full attention of their victim, they will then either reveal a blank face or else run their hand across mimic features as if, as if to wipe them away to nothing. Ew. That's so creepy. If anybody ever yeah. did you know, like this. And their face is gone. And all of a sudden their face is gone. I think I would, I would poop myself first. Yeah. And then I would see a Smooth, unnatural flesh stares down the unwary fool who has caught their attention. Being spooked by one of these faceless ghosts may not be the end of it, for they have a habit of working in pairs or even bigger groups to really mess with a human they've taken a strong dislike to. There are stories of extra traps being set up, deliberately hurting a person towards yet another one. Once the, per- once the poor victim reaches what they believe in their panic to be help, it then turns out to be another one ready to pull the no-face trick. In some stories, with the trick of responding to the victim's description of what just happened, the being will often say, did they look like this? And then do the wiping thing, and then it'll be... <laughs> it's like a horror movie. Yeah. Worryingly, sightings of Naparobo have persisted well into the modern day, and not just in Japan. Other places that have have historicized Japan, such as Hawaii, have their own no-faced ghost stories. So now we get to Hawaii. From the Monsters Here and There website, from an article called, quote, The Faceless Woman of Oahu, the article says... On May 19th, 1959, an article in the Honolulu Advertiser signaled the start of a strange series of events that may still be occurring. Bob Krauss, author of the regular column called In One Ear, featured on that day various rumors and secondhand accounts that had started to circulate a week earlier about the Wailele, 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 Wailele Drive-In Theater in the city of Honolulu on the island of Oahu in Hawaii. According to rumor, something was very wrong about the ladies' restroom at the theater. Krauss had heard two versions of the story of what had supposedly happened in the drive-in and recounted both in his column, apparently without any belief that either was true. The first story stated that a girl had gone to the restroom around midnight one night to freshen up her lipstick. As she was looking in the mirror to do this, she noticed the figure of a woman standing behind her, and the figure had no face and no legs touching the ground. No legs. The girl spun around, and nothing was behind her. Then the door to the bathroom slammed shut and locked by itself. She screamed and fainted, Mm -hmm. as would I. The second version of the story claims that when the girl had gone to the bathroom, she found out that she wasn't alone. Another woman was standing at the sinks, looking in the mirror and combing her long, beautiful hair. The girl walked over and said something, presumably a simple greeting, and the second woman turned to look at her. The second woman had no face. In both versions of the story, it asserted that the terror of the moment caused the girl to end up in the hospital with a total breakdown. Hmm. Reminds me of the ring. Yeah, yeah. But, so Hawaii has a... a history too of faceless ghosts which i thought was really interesting um but it also has like a japanese heritage yes i was just gonna say that or whatever that could be part of the that faceless thing Mm -hmm. but then somebody on reddit writes i had a persistent childhood terror of faceless people thinking back on it now i really have no idea where this stemmed from there have been a lot of reports of faceless people in hawaii as well in the united states the contiguous contiguous continuous as well in the mainland United States, <laughs> of both the smooth, featureless skin and gaping dark hold varieties. If I remember right, the Hawaiian ones tended to appear indoors while the others were frequently sighted at the side of the road. Hmm. So or in Krista a car. Reads. Y'all, I just had the weirdest <laughs> experience ever. It's 4.57 a.m. right now, Canada, as I was watching TV. And then I put in parentheses, are they from southern Canada? Y'all. Do <laughs> must Canadians be southern. say y'all? Must, must be southern Canada. Okay. I had this feeling that I needed to go look outside through through the window. Oh, wow. This is confusing. I had this feeling that I needed to go look outside throughout the window. 
Our campus, I don't think that's what they meant to write. No. Our campus is surrounded by lots of trees. Anyways, as I lo- take a look, four figures approach the campus. I try to see who these people, I try to see who are these people, and I kid you not, they don't have any faces. I thought maybe it's the lighting. Then again, I look and they don't have hair. It's just a bald white head. They seem to have different body types, though. A second later, I think, they saw me and just froze there. I backed off. A minute later, I go back to the window, and now only three of them walk away to the other side. They all had white plastic bags in their hands. I don't know what I just saw, but I swear to God, one had a rectangular head. <laughs> Anyways, so I'm not sleeping tonight. I'll read it. Sometimes you're like, wow, did you reread this before you posted it? No, nobody on there does. Reply, it sounds like you encountered mannequin people, as Lazy Masquerade explains it. Long ago, there were one or two stories about them on here, and I remember one witness was really disturbed in their account. One person said its head was moving like a bobblehead, but very rapidly. Yuck. <laughs> That's a big no. Ew. Like when, when movies do that, like that the, happened in yeah. Jacob's Ladder. Yes. Where I all of a sudden that. the head starts wobbling back and forth. There's nothing that creeps me out more than something like that. It I happens hate in that. the remake of The House on Haunted Hill, too. Yes, and I hate that. And the neck looked really odd, too. They definitely seemed like physical beings, maybe an interdimensional being or an alien species. People have said there's a few species of aliens living on Earth with us. I just wonder why they can't always maintain a believable face. Mm. Interesting. Me? Keep going? Yep. From the website Phantoms and Monsters. This is one of the two encounters I have had with paranormal entities in my life. About four or five times I saw something I could not even come close to explaining. When I was walking with my mother going from place to place, I would see people without faces. They looked totally normal otherwise with clothing just like you and me. The only weird thing was the fact that they had no face. Like fabric stretched over a softball (laughs) would be the best description. It's the same thing that that person said. Yep. I always dismissed them as my mind playing tricks on me, but as I grew older and became aware of what exists in our world, I realized I had that I had an encounter with a cryptid. What was especially strange is that... Would you call that a cryptid? I I would, because I don't know what it is. I feel like cryptids are more animal-based, though, rather than... You think so? Yeah. But that's just me. What is especially strange is that no one around me even noticed these things existed. They were totally oblivious. It was like they weren't even there. Another odd thing was I could always tell they were looking at me, even though they had no eyes to look at me with in the first place. I was always extremely scared whenever I saw one. A feeling of fear and dread always accompanied a sighting. But my mind filed it away as a figment of my imagination to avoid me becoming psychologically damaged, I think. Does anyone have any idea what the heck those things were? I'm at a loss here. That's just creepy. Yeah. I think I'm going to jump in and read some more, and then we're going to get to wrapping this up. Okay. We got a bunch more stories that we didn't get to, but those are going to be held for an uh, all stories episode. Okay. Um, It's just like, I don't know what these things are. Yeah. Somebody writes on Reddit. Doesn't Slender, we know Slender Man. Slender Man shows up in a lot of, yeah, but it shows up like kind of what these, yeah, what these are. Somebody on Reddit writes, I think about this a couple times a year and I've looked it up, but I never find anything similar. This happened a few years ago. One night, my now wife and I were driving back from Sonic. We lived in a very old, very small. Have you ever been to a Sonic? No, I've never been to a Sonic. We lived in a very, and I want to try it. Mm -hmm. We've lived in a very old, very small town in West Texas. It was raining, but not heavily. Puddles were on the ground. It was wet enough that it would be weird for someone to be out walking around. On top of that, there's lots of roads with little or no lighting, so lots of the roads are mostly dark at night. We were driving down what such road when it happened. As my wife and I were driving, I looked to my right and saw what I can only describe to be a faceless man. Not deformed, but faceless. His Mm -hmm. face was white, or really all of him looked white. He looked almost like a blur. His arms seemed impossibly long, almost down to the ground, and were moving in just unnatural ways. Like his arms were swinging back and forth aimlessly, but also very fast. Was it like AI? (laughs) The best I can describe is that this man's movements looked like he was glitching. Oh, yeah. Which is weird. We weren't moving fast, maybe 25 miles an hour, because we were in a residential area. I looked at him long enough that I had time to wonder what I was looking at before he was gone from my view. For a second, I even wondered if someone was using a weed whacker or doing yard work, but it was 9 p.m. and raining. I said nothing to my wife, assuming my eyes had just played tricks on me. It was dark, maybe the rain blurred the windows, I don't know. A few hours later, my wife nonchalantly asked me if I happened to notice the side of the road, the man on the side of the road that had no face. It's still the creepiest thing that's ever happened to me. Anyone might know what this is, or has anyone had a similar experience? 
Somebody responds, when I used to live out in Fredericksburg, Virginia, I was driving home one night through a side road. It was dark, and this was by a Civil War area. It's a two-lane road, one lane each direction. As I went around a corner and the road started to straighten out, on my right, right on the tree line before it touched the road, there was a person standing there, and I swear to God, its face was a blur. It freaked me out so much that I made a U-turn as soon as I could and drove by again, but now there was no one there. I remember the person was wearing a white t-shirt and looked like a male, young, but it wasn't raining. And I remember seeing everything else clearly, the tree, some signs, but the face was just this weird blur. I'll never forget that. Somebody else writes, when I was brushing my teeth, I saw one of these things walk into the bathroom. I was facing the mirror and watched it walk in. Like using in their house? Yes, using the mirror to look at me. It Ugh. had long arms, long hands, and fingers. It wore a suit and had whitish skin. Okay, it was, they're describing Slender Man. <laughs> it was hunched over and had a blank face. I love this description. It was like those guys. From, have you ever seen the Buffy creatures from the episode yeah, Hush? The, yes. Yeah. Oh, they, they had faces. They, they write. It was like it was like those guys those from the grins. silent Buffy episode had a baby with Slenderman. Oh. Okay. When I was looking at it, it reached towards me and I flinched. It was then that I realized that I could see it, and its blank, smooth face formed a split and smiled sharp teeth. Oh. I ran into the bedroom and told my husband about it. I didn't get any sleep because I felt so strongly that it was waiting for me to sleep so that it could steal something from me. I wouldn't even be in the house anymore. Fun times, yeah. Somebody else responds, I had a similar experience many years ago at a train station in Sydney. It was late at night and I was by myself and I remember looking up and down the platform to be aware of my surroundings. And as I scanned back across the platform was a tall figure wearing a suit, but it had no facial features, just blank skin. I remember my brain not processing it and trying to make out facial features. I ran up to the platform. I was so scared I didn't see anyone come up any platform, so I ran back down when my train came and was looking for them inside the train, but the person was just gone. To this day, I can't explain it. <laughs> Somebody writes, it's not, a big, it's not as big a deal as most people think it is. He's just an NPC that failed to render. It's the hat guy you need to worry about. <laughs> oh, hat man. <laughs> I love this one. We were sitting outside the 7-Eleven at night. We both saw a man that appeared to have no face. I pointed it out to my girlfriend and she saw it too. We were outside for five minutes. In five minutes, the faceless dude didn't move at all. We went to the 7-Eleven. When we came out, he was just gone. This happened to us about a year ago and I still have no idea what it was. And somebody responds to this saying, I've been to 7-Elevens late at night. This is one of the less scary things you'll see there. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, that's funny. Yeah. Somebody said, this one creeps me out. I saw one once in the back of a cop car a few years ago. We were in the car behind it, and this thing just turned its neck a full 360 degrees to turn to look at us, and it was faceless. I got instant chills and just hit my brakes and let the cop drive off. Yeah. (laughs) That is creepy. Once I was hiking... Once I was hiking... The creepy thought is that the (coughs) cops have no idea what's sitting in the backseat. Uh, Somebody else writes, Once I was hiking on a multi-day trek on Vancouver Island with a bad knee. I decided to take a trail back to the road so I could hitchhike back to my vehicle because the pain was nearly unbearable. As I tried to locate a trail to the road, I saw a man standing in the middle of the woods with his back to me. He wasn't moving at all, but appeared to be looking up towards the sky. I was walking over leaves and sticks and was making a fair bit of noise, and he didn't move at all to look at me. I had a horrible feeling of dread, and my stomach felt like it was dropping. I immediately spun around and headed in the opposite direction back to the main trail I was as I was terrified. I ended up just finishing the track walking the main path back. I always wondered if I had seen the man's face, what would have been there. Perhaps he was a faceless man. I don't ever want to run across somebody in the woods just looking up and not doing anything. Not reacting that, no, to that's your creepy. presence is weird. Somebody else writes, they get this stuff on Reddit a lot. The world is filled with the faceless ones. Usually they are only in forests and the wilderness, but lately they have been coming out and being more bold in populated areas. Some of them truly have no face. Others use technology or psychic techniques to hide their true features. Just one of the many different kinds of beings that pass for humans that live among us. So there you go. Hmm. Somebody else responds, I was driving and saw someone in the distance as I reached a stop sign. I look right and then look left to be cautious. The person or thing appears right next to me. It was fully black, tall, faceless, and was perfectly muscular. I don't know how, but it appeared next to me even though it was far away originally. It was night and it happened about an hour ago around 2 o'clock a.m. Has anyone else seen something like this? And somebody says, this is the mannequin people phenomenon. Lots of people all over the world for decades have reported seeing them. Miley Cyrus, the singer, actually claimed to see them once driving a car, hmm. which is weird. Uh, I think I'm going to wrap Some this up. Some mannequins have faces, though. Yeah. Just saying. Yeah. What are we looking at here? Well, we should wrap it up soon. Yeah. Um, let's see here. 
we're gonna i have so many more stories of this but we're gonna i mean i have yeah we're gonna put it here too we're gonna put it um we can definitely save these yeah we're gonna have another uh, stories and it's just weird like i don't know somebody said like somebody writes some fun theories for all of you that come to me after watching these youtube videos about this number one they are shapeshifters caught unaware you were never meant to see them like that Mm. if you see them like that they might follow you home another theory they might be automatons spying on population centers spying on us for an alien ai threat somebody else theory number three hallucinations Theory number four, theory number four, interdimensional crossovers with the lack of features being due to something being out of sync. Hmm. I don't know. I don't know what I think of this. I really don't. Yeah. But I'm going to end with this. Somebody says, I too had an encounter and until I saw this post, I didn't even know what I was looking at. I was 26 at the time and was living in Arizona. It was after work and I was walking my dog and this car came down the road and this guy slowed down his vehicle to check me out. He was going super slow and I was unnerved. I turned to look at him and saw the backwards hat on his head, but he had absolutely no face. I couldn't believe what I was seeing, so I kept staring at him, and he stared at me. It seemed like he smiled at me, and I felt that even though I couldn't see his face. It was the creepiest smile, like he knew that I was seeing his true identity. Hmm. Like others, the best way to describe his face is that it was strangely blurred. I couldn't define any feature no matter how long I looked at him, and yet I could tell you all about his shirt and his ball cap on his head. It's interesting that some say it's blurry. Yeah. And others say there is no face. Yep. Are they the same thing then? I don't know. I don't know. Somebody responds, I think these things are all over society, but most people can't see them for mm-hmm. whatever reason. And then somebody responds, never let them know you can see them. Mm-hmm. And and with this, this is good advice for anybody. Somebody writes, quote, most of the advice I can give you came from my great grandmother. Don't whistle at night. You don't know what might call to you. If you're walking in the woods or hear someone call your name, no, you didn't. Keep walking. (laughs) No, you didn't. (laughs) Never stare out of your window after dark because you don't know what's staring back at you. Agreed. If you go outside and feel like you're being watched, you are. Mm. Go back inside, but don't run because only prey runs. Never pick up a hitchhiker walking on a gravel road at night, especially if they are wearing white clothes. Or any road. The further away something sounds, the closer it is. Never watch. I don't like that. Never watch the tree line because you don't know what's watching you back. If you see a tree with bottles on it, don't touch it. Those bottles are there for a reason. Never take so much as a pebble from a cemetery. You don't know what might be attached to it. If you hear something out of sight calling for help, you didn't, especially after dark. (laughs) Keep a broom over your door to sweep away all the bad luck from the outside world and from following you into your home. Never investigate strange noises by yourself, and it's never wise to go exploring the woods alone. I keep I hope room these, next to my door. I hope these help whoever needs them. All good all good advice. So Sound, there you go. There are some advice. faceless people. What do you think this is? There's well, a lot of stories of other this. Other than hallucinations, I don't think there is a mundane explanation. No, There's no. something weird. Go- yeah. if, if these are true. So many of these are driving, which, which yeah, weirds weird. me out. You know, and somebody, somebody, somebody's theory was that when these things are driving... That concentration of driving, they can't keep the the facade, the facade of, their of what their face, mm. and they get so mad when somebody can see, hmm. which is a creepy That's idea. A really that creepy thing idea. that people walking around us aren't they do kind of glitch aren't necessarily out a people. Yeah. So I don't know if it would just be one or two stories, it would be like whatever. But there's tons of stories yeah. about people coming across. Yeah, I have like pages. People coming across something without a face mm. that knows, like some of these things get joy out of knowing that they're freaking the people mm-hmm. out which sounds like that naparo naparo bow or whatever that was and others get angry. and others get angry that you can see them that one that was jogging was just like what well, you can see me that was yeah. like surprised and then the lady shaking in the car the lady shaking so out mad. of anger in the car and there's some there's some weird ones that we skipped today so those are going to be in a future stories episode but i don't know what to make of this i mean as far as theories i don't know like it freaks yeah, me out it freaks me out to think that there's things out there that masquerade as humans right you know we'd be none the wiser and again these are from reddit so god only knows right. if any of these are real but even if one or two of these are like what are these things that's why i'm more likely to believe the whistler stories because that they could be people they could be birds but yeah a faceless person is a little harder to yeah, swallow but it is but people but enough hey, man, people have seen this you i have know? an open mind a lot of people say that sometimes it's just white sometimes it's a black like a f- black fabric covering a softball mm. Some people say that it was like a shadow. One said it was just it was darkness. a blur. Sometimes yeah. it's like this weird. One of them that we didn't get to today. Somebody said they looked over at the car and the woman like turned to look at them, and it was like 
somebody like her face was photoshopped but somebody used the smudge thing oh, where her face yeah. was all like smudged down weird so there's a, there is some weirdness out there yeah if you see any faceless people yeah, or, or hear any whistlers I'm Tell sorry. Us. Yeah, <laughs> no, sorry. Sorry. Don't whistle back. But let us know. <laughs> like, I'm fascinated by I'm fascinated by weird things like this that yeah. a lot of people claim to see. Mm-hmm. You know, and I'm I'm I read these Reddit stories all the time, so I'm like keeping. I have a stories notepad at home on my computer that I'm keeping like themed ones. Like, there's mm-hmm. so many so many stories about people hearing machinery sounds in the woods where there shouldn't mm-hmm. be any. So I'm mm-hmm. trying to I'm trying to get a good good uh, group of stories coming with themes so i'm gonna add the ones we didn't get to today for the faceless theme and the whistler theme and there's a lot of stories out there but do i do i 100 percent believe that these things exist like i don't know yeah i don't know i don't know to say there's there's enough stories about them but until i actually see a faceless person or hear a whistler i don't know yeah but we're gonna post the the whistler video with the fireworks where the guy thinks that it's the guy in the canoe yeah but we're gonna post I actually watch that because i i had no awareness that there was somebody in a canoe but yeah. it was on my phone yeah like I said. yeah i'll link that in the description for the so YouTube song video. choice for today uh not this is this is one of those songs that should have been a hit in the 90s like this was such a good song they have one song one other song that they're well known for but most people don't know them and even when you name the other song they'll be like i don't know but when you start to sing it they'll be like oh okay mm-hmm. i know so some of the YouTube comments under this one, somebody writes, this was my third favorite single of 1995. I get that we all have different tastes and I understand why certain bands I like don't do well commercially, but the fact that this song didn't even get into the top 50 is absolutely baffling. It's like the perfect pop song. Somebody else writes, why are these guys so underrated? And somebody else writes, this deserves so many more views. These guys are criminally underrated. And it is the band, The Wanna Dies, and it is their song, Might Be Stars. Never heard of that. Their song that you would know is called the You and Me song. Hmm. It starts off slow. Uh, I'll maybe put a link to that, okay. too, in the comments under Might Be Stars. But Might Be Stars is such a good song, and it was such a good 90s pop song. Hmm. Like, I love this band. I I have this CD, and it's, like, every song on it is super good, and I just will never understand why they weren't bigger here. Hmm. Most people know the You and Me song because it was in the movie Romeo and Juliet back in the day with Claire Danes. Oh, I love that movie. Yeah. so I have the soundtrack, so I'm, I know for a fact I've heard it. <laughs> <coughs> Once we stop recording, that was a great soundtrack. it for you on YouTube. But okay. you'll, you'll, and you'll totally be like, oh, I know it. Yeah. But their song, Might Be Stars, was so good. So that is a song for today, Might Be Stars by the Wanna Dies. And a question from a listener. Somebody writes, is there a piece of advice you'd give to listeners who are starting their own podcast? Mm. Holy moly. That's the, tough. The one I <laughs> the one that I thought of is don't expect a million listeners right off the bat. Yeah. Because it's it's probably not going to happen. You know, it's if it, it'll happen organically. Yeah. You know, like uh, we did, like we ours you know, we didn't put it out there for everybody to live for tons of people to yeah. listen, you know, and I almost think you're better off going in with a mindset that the only people that are going to listen to it are your friends or family. And most of my friends and family don't listen to it. No, <laughs> it just adds up. a lot of my family listens to it. So love you, fam. But don't, don't like, I read so many posts by people that are like, we've been doing our podcast for like two months and we've only got a hundred listeners. Mm-hmm. And it's like, give it time. Yeah. You know, it's, it's, that's one of the most frustrating things I think is that people start thinking that it's going to be big right away and it's not. Yeah. I think I have two pieces of advice. One, you want to have good sound and you do not need to spend a lot of money to make that happen. Our whole setup, like that little mixer and our mics is probably less than $200. So we did not spend a lot of money. Audacity is free. Just download it. Yeah, Audacity is great. Yeah. So that's my first thing is you want to have good sound because I cannot stand podcasts that don't have no. good sound. No. Nope. My second one is just do it for fun. Do it for you. Do it because you love doing it. Don't do it to get listeners to exactly. make money. Exactly. Like you because and I you're going to be disappointed. You and I said at the start, <laughs> we did. even if only two people listen, we would do this because we love talking about yeah, this stuff. This is, we could do this all day. Yeah. So yeah, exactly what you said yeah. is perfect. It's just perfect. do it because you're enjoying it. 
don't take it too seriously. Yeah, don't think you're going to make fun. a ton of money. Don't think you're going to become famous. Just do it and because also, you love it. Yeah. Make it something that you would want to listen to. Yeah. If you wouldn't listen to it, why would you expect anyone else to listen to it? I cannot listen to podcasts where one person is way louder than another person. Oh, yeah. You got to figure your Because sound. then I have to turn it up. Yes. And then the one person is so you're like, loud. Ah! Yeah, so it's it's blow your ear. And like I said, out. I've listened to so many of these. That we sound, struggled in the yeah. beginning. We had yeah. bad sound. Oh yeah, we had beginning. horrible sound. And we in had the, the first same season, setup, but, but we didn't know what we were doing. Yeah, we figured it so, out. So and also, don't expect perfection off. You know, we're Eight we've been seasons <laughs> in, and we're not we're not even anywhere near. Sometimes perfect. the camera shuts off. Sometimes yeah. it stops recording. Yeah. Like it just happens. Don't so take don't, it too. Don't seriously. expect perfection off because you're going to learn as you go on. Yeah. You know, um, I love that people are actually asking us for advice. So I never thought we'd be in that position. Yeah, because we don't know what the hell we're doing. Uh, we still have no idea. <laughs> we have no idea. No clue. But hey, we love that you guys listen. Yeah, we do. So that's that's what I got for today. Okay. Whistlers and the faceless. And the faceless. Now, faceless whistlers would be really weird. Faceless whisper. Especially if they don't have a mouth. How are they doing the whistle? It's like careless whisper by Wham, but faceless whisper. That would be. <laughs> um, but I'm I'm far more creeped out by by the faceless by the faceless. Mm. Because there's something sinister about that when something's pretending to be human. That's yeah, that's not, creepy. Like, there's something... I mean, it's not comforting to know something's whistling in the woods trying to get your attention. Or in your house. But I feel like that is way more easily explained. Birds, critters. Yeah, I agree. Um, wind. Creepy you know. people. I'm waiting for... Somebody said... I thought it was funny. Somebody said, I'm waiting for two Reddit stories where people live on the opposite side of this woods and they're whistling. <laughs> and they're like, somebody is whistling back to us. And it's like these two different they're, houses oh, that's that are so funny. whistling back to each other. How often that actually happens. But no, I'm, I'm fascinated with these. And I thought one of these could be our creature that becomes the Strange Sessions creature, but not to be. They're, they're both discussed at length in other podcasts. But we'll find one. Dang it. I've been watching, as always, I watch a lot of um, YouTube ghost hunting. Not a lot of different shows because I don't buy most of them. But there's one called Ghost Theory that I really like. It's these two guys in the UK. They're friends. They're hilarious. And they are so logical. They they yeah. try to explain everything away. Yeah. But they make me cra- crack up in every episode. But they do occasionally run into other people who are there. Yeah. And those are always the best episodes to me because yeah. they're really scary. Yeah. But also there's just episodes where they're hearing voices or whatever and they're freaking out because there's not there doesn't appear to be anyone there. And someone in the comments is like, we're gonna come across that other YouTube group of <laughs> yeah. you, urban explorers yeah. who were catching <laughs> you on their video yeah. and you're both freaking each other out. And I'm like, it's so true. These are big, huge, old abandoned locations. And what are the odds that there are two groups in at the same time and they don't know? Probably pretty good. It's probably very good. You so know, how I, often are you catching activity? And it's just another group who thinks they're catching activity. That's and... like when I read like glitch in the Matrix ones where people purposely go to mess with people. Like they'll have this weird kind of outfit on. And they'll go in the morning to a store and buy oh. like a couple weird things. And then hours later, they'll go back and do the, do same, the same exact thing, thing because yeah. they like that they're giving this person this idea twins. of mystery. We've yeah, talked twins about that. Twins stuff. will mess with people that yeah. way. Yep. So yeah, stuff like that is funny. I'll have to look at that ghost theory Yeah, channel. it's good. I that like it. actually sounds good. And they have some shorter videos too. They're not, they're not all like two hours yeah. long. Sometimes yep. they're a half hour. Sweet. So there you go. Hopefully this was an okay episode. Um, let us know what you think. Whistlers, the faceless. Do you think these are mostly stories? Do you think that there's possibly creatures like this? To me, cryptid means anything that's unexplainable. For me, a cryptid doesn't have to be animal. I always think it's animal based, no, but I, I could of, be wrong. I think of anything in the woods as being a cryptid, but maybe you're right. Maybe cryptid means. To me, if it's like a human type thing, it's more of a... Just a paranormal. Well, a phenomenon. lot of these come from like a, the Hat Man's not a cryptid. No, there's a really good subreddit I'm on called Humanoid Encounters, which is That's where a lot a of this stuff comes. A faceless thing would be like a humanoid. That's what where I think. Yeah. Bigfoot would be a cryptid. Interesting. Because cryptozoology is uh, the study of these things, and zoology to me says animals. We had a third creature on here, and I don't know what I was thinking that we were going to get because we cut out <laughs> so much. We would have not had time for the third creature, which is like a fascinating one that I did not know was a thing until I was on Brian Young's podcast mm. and um, Tim Schwartz because I was talking about my my experience in the apartment about the guy crawling out of the bathroom and Tim said you realize the flannel man's a thing. Oh jeez. So there is there is a I thing. I didn't know yeah, that. Yeah, there is a thing called the flannel man that people see. Oh. And my my creature there whatever that was that crawled out of my bathroom at that apartment was kind of like a flannel man. Yeah. So flannel man was the third one that I was going to get to today but you know, gonna... we could do some of these as side sessions. Yeah, but the, I feel like those should almost be more strange sessions. Like side sessions I think like true crimey stuff that's a little mm-hmm. weird that could be 
but like the flannel man i think we always end up releasing them eventually to yeah. the strange sessions yeah. so i'm just saying but there is a flannel man and there's, okay it's creep, we have to talk it's about creepy that, stories then. about uh, yeah but we'll talk about that in a future episode so okay. thank you guys so much deets. thank you oh the deets shoot and after i just shut my thing Whoop, that ain't it Whoop, that ain't it <laughs> <laughs> all right there it ain't <laughs> there it ain't there we go there we go you can email us at the. You think I would know this by now that I wouldn't yeah, even look would it think. up? Yeah, you would think. But I don't know our PO box. <laughs> the Strange Sessions at gmail.com. That's where you can send us email. We are on Instagram at The Strange Sessions, where Krista does a great job and we have amazing listeners that we love. You can send postcards and snail mail to The Strange Sessions, PO Box 434, Manitowoc, Wisconsin, 54221 0434. You can call our lonely phone line at 920 443 9602. We haven't gotten a call there lately. Mm-hmm. And you can send a listener story to the strange sessions stories at gmail.com and we'll we will read it in an episode Sweet. so there you go thank you guys so much for listening like it floors me when i think about how long we've been doing this i know and how many of our listeners have been with us from like the start the start yeah so thank you guys so much for listening like we love you guys we love that we bring joy and strangeness to your life mm-hmm. i guess And just know that we love you. So thank you so much for listening. And from Krista and I, until next time, stay Stay strange. strange.